Waha! <laughs> yeah. I'm really looking forward to this one. This oh it's so much Yes, it's gonna be good. Yep. It's gonna be real good. And thank you again so much for, for the awesome uh, we have what we talked about Forgotten Realms and cartography and maps and stuff. Oh, that was fun. No, that Great was, fun. That was so awesome. Yeah, we could do a follow up. I have some other things for a future show sometime down the line where we can connect to some of these issues again because there there are some some issues we didn't have time to get into because we had so many other cool stuff to talk about. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm great with that. Thank you. Hey, Gitano. Hey, Jared. Hope you're all doing well. Oh, look at those beautiful... Yeah, Mitch Building beautiful. Authority. Yep. My first ever sponsor. Ah. Yeah. Jay has to do, use his basement for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've known uh, Kirk, Kirk, the owner of MBA, since uh, two, 2000. They first came out with stuff, awesome stuff. Snowed in? Oh, you're in the Buffalo area? Oh my God, that's crazy how much snow they're getting up there. But uh, yeah, we're doing well. We got no, I got like flurries for about five minutes on Christmas Eve, I think it was. Yep. Or, uh, you know, at some point um, close to that. So, hey, hey, Scott, what's going on? Yeah, people keep telling me that don't talk about weather in Southern California. Yeah, don't so curse it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we're going yeah. to get worse though, but or, or going to get California winter in a couple of days. What, with mudslides and stuff? That kind of winter? Oh, it's just rain and 60 uh, degrees. That's uh, that's California winter. Yeah. Oh, say to Mars. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Today we had 80 degrees and sunny, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Terrible. Hey, Broomy, I'm good to see you. Terrible California weather. Yep. <laughs> oh, near Ottawa, so you're not far from Ed. Jarrett, Jarrett's terrain minis near Ottawa, Ontario. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's about a five hour drive. Okay. Yeah. Not too bad. Alright. I, I could do it in less, but we have these things called speed limits. Yeah, I know. Really They're annoying. Yep. Although it was like, I, uh, I was in, when I was in Texas uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I was like 85. On the on the uh, what whatever the interstate is 35, where I was like, woohoo, yeah, it was like, crazy. <laughs> I was like, awesome. What's up, Lady Gwen? I'll get you at the end of the show again. Get you that two-week VIP badge. We're rolling in here. I'm gonna after this fighting pitch show, I'll cut this one a little a little short here. Ah. Oh. That we have that, that, that real nice. That's we got that for our table. The whole fighting pit thing is really awesome. It's hard for me to use it though, Anna. Right? I mean, how many times can I use that thing? You know? Well, you you stay in the same area. You can just go back and over yeah. and over again. Yep. Next year, <laughs> so to speak. It's always next year, and <laughs> the yeah. arenas can be used every year. That's true. And then you can have fairs and other local stuff and. And so on. So you can Except you can host an uprising there, and, and there, there's lots of possibilities. So true. All right, let me get some shouts here. schedule this week is um, uh, tonight and Wednesday, right? Anna, you and me, and we're going to figure out what we're going to do for... Uh... I have some ideas about that one. Okay. So Legends of Lord, Mike, Mike's out. And then, um, then we have, uh, have a game, my normal game Thursday. It's going to be a special game, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a couple of special guests on for that. Just playing around a one-shotter. So that'll be good. Other than that...
right now. It's like I just my brain just fr fried. Oh, I forget what button to hit next. Oh my gosh! It was like what do I hit next? Then I was like, oh my gosh! I haven't been off that long, right? Right now, it's only been a couple days. Yeah. Why is this? That's Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Yeah, I think it was Thursday. I, I just, oh my gosh. Was that when you had your... Uh... You did the Battle Tech game. It was Thursday, yeah. 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 Oh, I, uh, Alyssa sent me a miniature uh, a Christmas holiday gift. It's really nice. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show it. Thursday. Night. Well, I can show it tomorrow night too. I got so much stuff. I mean, I have books everywhere tonight around this one, you know? So. Books. Set your copies of books. Stuff everywhere. This is like American sports teams. They ruin the fun. They practice beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Alright. Where oh whew. I was like, I heard Ed's voice somewhere else and I, I had didn't I didn't mute my own laptop. So hey Stella. Hello. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Yeah, we uh we did we've done two Battletech games in the last couple weeks, Sir Rembrandt and uh, um, one like prep session. Hey, Tad. So, this is a beautiful video. They did a great job with us doing the Christmas cards over the years for Troller Games. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I got a nice Troller Game giveaway tonight, too. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Chuck gets a lot of rising, but he usually he usually does a good job, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, we'll all get all of us, you, me, Ed, all the Trollord people. We can all hang out together at GaryCon coming up in a couple yeah. months. Yes. Mm, you know. Yes. Fingers crossed. Yes. Fingers absolutely crossed. It'd be awesome. But I submitted my events. I was a good boy. Oh wow, cool! <laughs> yeah, I've submitted mine too. Yeah, that's good. So, Ed, are you both running games and doing seminars and stuff? Or, or... yep, yep. If 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 they're approved, because they're like, oh yeah, no, awaiting approval. No, yeah, no, 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 they're yeah. approved. Um, yeah, there's a, uh, uh, I think three panels. And I think three or three or four games. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Three or four games, and the one that I'm DMing for you. Yes, and the, yeah, <laughs> not, not counting that one. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. We're both as we're both as busy. We're both extremely going to be busy there. Yeah. So, but that's awesome. Yeah, I think I think this time around, I will just do Fate of the Norns games. I I won't be running any D and D. No, that's um, awesome though. But we'll um, we'll we'll. Uh, have some stuff up the sleeve for next year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. For the anniversary. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're thinking about having it for like two weekend, two weeks, or two weekends. Two hey, weekends. Sparky. Wow. I haven't seen you in a while. See, that's a good thing. When I come on on like a weird night on Monday night, some of the people who can't make it on those other nights can show up, which is awesome. Yeah. So. You mean we should randomize when we uh, have the as, shows? As, as, yeah, I, that way, uh, yeah, my wife randomizes the day she throws me out of the house, too. So, yeah, I'm I think just that's already pre -planned. Yeah. Yeah, pre -planned. Yeah. Good to see your hobbies. So, we'll have fun with this. We'll have fun with this tonight. It'll be a good discussion. Yeah. I got we'll books. Go with the DC. Yep. Books and books and books. So we are honored and obliged and happy to have Ed back again for another wonderful discussion! Yes. Hi! <laughs> Hang on. Look, it's even snowing here in the background in our window. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> that's a room I'd like to spend time in. Exactly. That's the yeah. study in Lord Peak's Haven. The uh, yes, the back of the floor. Okay. I love that little uh, swaying little. Uh, yeah, yeah, the perpetual the motion hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got a whole bunch of different things I can throw in there, like the can you can lit candles and you know uh -huh. the portal yep. and all sorts of stuff. So you can change the scene outside the window too. Then yeah, I can change the background scene. I have like five or six uh -huh. scenes behind the window. Oh yep. wow! Yep. Oh, awesome. Yep. So all right, let's come live here. We're three minutes early. No one's gonna punish us for that. It's too neat to be Elminster Study. Phantoms at 491 Phantoms. I don't know about that. You saw Ed's library picture, right? That looked pretty. That looked pretty organized I, I to think, me. Um, Elminster study is even cooler. Yeah. yeah so, what's up, Zump? Good to see everyone tonight. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Boxing Day. Or uh, happy celebrations to whatever you celebrate. I'm Jay Curler Gazumba, and with me, my partner in crime, Anna Meyer. As we're Hello. back the day after Christmas, and special guest tonight, returning again, legendary Ed Greenwood. Good evening, Ed. Hi. Cannot wait for this. This just came about. We started talking about a couple, couple spells during the fantasy mapping show, and I'm like, let's just let's just go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I so I, I Twitter messaged and I said, Ed, you free anytime during the week between Christmas and New Year's? So this is what we came up with. So we have a little holiday celebration show and uh, yep. talk about spells, custom spells, creating your own spells, campaign spells for for the realms of Greyhawk. Uh, lots of uh, fun discussions here. Let me uh, let me do this for everyone. Let me set this up. Uh, we set the giveaway up. At minimum, I'll do the following if I can find the right button to press here without crashing everything. All right. So, Troller Games. I'm going to give this away tonight at minimum. And this is the uh, uh, Castles and Crusades Monsters and Treasures of Air book. All right. Really nice book. So, we'll give that away tonight. And uh, I think I've cracked this once or twice. I have it on PDF. So, uh, yep. Really a cool, a cool book. And then uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, here we go. It should, exclamation point drawing, it should be working, so you just got to be on the claim. And if you're outside the continental U.S., we'll figure out something, getting you uh, something there. So, Ed, um, I had been playing for a long time, and I, I don't know how much spell customization I did. And I know you have a ton of them, in, in, uh, in mostly in Dragons at first, and a lot of them end up in these four books, right, through the first and second edition era. Right, the Wizard yes. Spell Compendium, a lot of them end in there. But, like... I think, and it had to be before this, my my experience was this book is when I go, you know what, this is just too good to be true, uh, and that's that's Greyhawk Adventures Jim Ward book, right? That's when I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do this. You know, there's so many great spells in this book. There were all the Circle of Eight spells, and, you know, and we're going to add these all into our campaign. Oh my gosh. So, um, but... Forgotten Realms came out in 85, correct? Officially? Uh, 87? Okay, 87. Okay. But it was written about in the in the Dragon before that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but you were writing spells before the publication, up, 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 up all the way. Oh, right? yeah. Um, I saw in Dragon Magazine, you know, the pages from the mages later on when uh, they asked me to support all three worlds. But, yeah, you from the this? very beginning. Uh, yeah, they were collected into that. Yeah, oh, what a, we got to discuss uh, but, a ton in here. Yeah, yeah, but but the whole point for me was, I wanted magic to be mysterious, and so you couldn't hold memories of every single spell in your head at the yeah. gaming table. Yeah. And in the early days of D and D, we had lots of people who devoured the books. They memorized mm -hmm. them, and uh, Monster Manual as well as. Um, the, the 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 books yeah. that had spells in them um so they would encounter somebody and they'd metagame they'd step outside the role playing using what they knew about the rules and that's the same reason i i did lots of look-alike monsters like monsters that look like beholders it was right. to boot people out of using their metagaming at the gaming table and back into role playing i'm still hurt mm -hmm. yeah. So you could face anything. So yeah, I was I was doing tons of spells because I wanted spells to be there to be too many for anybody to just Greek. memorize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might stick a like a like it. Oh my gosh, you know uh, that that's awesome because that's exactly the way I saw it. Was uh, 
you had when they added on Thurkana, you had thirty first level magic user spells. Yeah. Right? And then what? Like uh, illusion spells you may have had ten of each, you know, and then you know, Druid and Clark Clarkles had a fair amount, Druid barely had any, and I'm like, this is just not enough. I mean, it just is really yeah. limiting. And then that that book came out, uh, the Grok Adventures book, uh, uh and had a ton of spells in it. I'm like, Oh, this is gold. Uh, you know, and then all the stuff that I used to call them what we used to call them packet spells because I didn't know where to put them. Um, and I'll give you an example. So if we pull out Jay's Necromancer class, right? All right, and we go in here, and I have a P next to all this stuff that I don't know. It, usually, that meant it came out of a Dragon magazine article, and a lot of these are probably yours, <laughs> like okay. ghost, like Ghost Grail. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, um, you know, and they're just they're just in there, and they, we photocopied them, and, yeah. and uh, oh, and like one of the favorites of all time, Flesh Shiver, right? You yeah, know, you know, <laughs> and and, that, and that's just where they ended up. You know, was it was in was in here as a photocopy because you know we didn't have, you know, you had Microsoft Access back then. That was a pain to use, and so uh, you know, and that just. And it just compiled and compiled and compiled. And then you started a lot of like the spells that were in Dragon that you did started showing up some here, right? Or was this all new stuff? I think a couple of them were in here. Um, yep. But th they all ended up in the compendiums. I mean, this is this is where you, if you want the if you want the first and second edition, almost every published adventure, I'm sorry, published spell, and and I guarantee over fifteen percent of them are Eds. <laughs> These books, <laughs> crazy stuff. <laughs> You know, because Eric Boy was more clerical, so Eric had a lot of clerical. We, we could talk clerical as well, you know. But um, these books are great if you can get a hold of them. So, yes, can never have too many spells. You're right, Mitch. You can't have too many spells. So, so Ed, uh, what were your, what were your little tricks back in the uh, initial days of doing this? Like you're like, mm, how am I going to okay. trick them up? Well, okay, let let's 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 talk uh, spells from let, let's metagame for a moment um, yeah, and please. talk talk about what you would do if you're playing a wizard or any arcane uh, magic spellcaster well when you're starting out as a player y you tend to want two things powerful battle smiting spells you know either magic missile spells or the equivalent that don't miss or that very rarely miss or relatively big damage spells like Fireball and Lightning Bolt. Um, and you also want protection defensive spells, for the most simple one, Shield, because you spell. soon realize how weak your character is. Easy to hit, low hit points. So you want to up armor, and you want to up gun. And Shield and makes you immune to magic missiles. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And later, you start to realize the usefulness of buff spells. But yeah. then the party cleric has better ones, usually. And then you start to enjoy the fun part of D&D. &D. What makes D&D &D different from, say, a board game that has magic in it, or most board games? The weirdo spells, like Featherfall and Tensor's Floating Disc, and Knock, meaning spells yeah. that have cool effects. So true, true. Let, me talk, let me talk about designing spells for the game for a moment. Sure. Because this, this is actually fun to do. This, this is what I was, you know, when we, we talked about this, this is what I thought, this will be fun to do yeah. on, on air. Hey, Bill. Um, mm -hmm. So as a designer, I'm constantly looking for what's missing from what PCs can do. What blanks need filling? Yeah, and, and let, we're going back to the ad, original player's handbook, and you read through the spell lists, and everything in them is cool. But what what is missing? And I'm also looking for nuts and bolts spells. Spells that can be used in combination with other magics or with mundane objects or items or terrain to put together bigger effects, in particular, to power up the wizard's usefulness at low level. Just to give you an example off the top of my head, if I have a spell that can move stuff around, like a minor form of telekinesis, yeah, I can wing things around. But if I have 
a big bucket of marbles and I cast that same spell and I can <laughs> fling them underfoot. You know, I can I can up the range sure. and yeah, in effect. So a combat wizard might take a shield spell uh, if they don't have, say, bracers of defense that they gained somewhere along the way. And then they might load up on magic missiles. But what other spells might be useful? Now, I'm, I'm talking before we added cantrips to the game now, mm -hmm. okay? First level spells. Um, most of the ones that are in the player's handbook are basic and mostly unexciting, but very useful. You know, the uh, we might resort to magic missile. But something like read magic is very useful. Yeah. You need it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're things you have to have. But I was looking for more coolness without total lack of utility. Because something not useful will just never get used in the game. So, okay, let me just make up a spell at random. What about a spell mm -hmm. called false rune? Okay. What the hell's false rune? Well, here we go. False rune. Evocation. Level one. Range zero. Duration, two rounds a level. Area of effect, special. Components, verbal somatic material. Mm -hmm. Casting time, one round. Saving throw, special. Explanation description. This spell makes the caster's forefinger glow for one round. And during that time, they can trace by direct touch any symbol, writing, or random scribble they desire on the first solid surface they touch. It can be themselves, another living creature, or any sort of surface, including adjacent surfaces of different materials, but in the same plane of orientation, like a closed wooden door and the surrounding stone wall that is flush with the door, but not a closed door that's recessed into a wall and the non-flush wall beside Got it. it. Okay. And it has to be, you know, a, a, a um, non-mutable surface. Like you can't be writing on the rippling water in a, in a stream or a pond. Whatever they write has no magical capabilities and cannot be made part of another magical effect. And it's the only form of contact that will not trigger an explosive rune spell or a glyph of warding. A false written rune can be written over such an effect without setting it off. Ah. So the, though the caster of the false rune will momentarily be aware that they've come into contact with some sort of writing or mark that has slumbering or lurking magic on it without seeing the mark or learning its true nature. The false rune will glow brightly, a sickly green-white, for two rounds per level of the caster, pulsing brightly white with a steady one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off rhythm. Throughout this time, visible as far off as a small lit oil lantern is and cannot be ended by the caster's will before the spell runs out. The material components for this spell are a pinch of candle or torch soot, a drop of the caster's spittle or tears, and a pinch of crushed firefly, or a whole firefly, living or dead. <laughs> Items receive no saving throw against this spell, but creatures, sentient or not, do. If the save succeeds, the false rune fades away immediately, and the spell is ended and expended. If the save fails, the false rune pulses on the creature until the spell runs out or it is dispelled by another means. Most casters use this spell to place a warning message, highly flammable is an example, on an item or a creature, such as a traitor on the chest or forehead of a person, or to deceive others that something mundane is magical or protected by magic, so is either valuable or should be left alone. Okay, that's the spell. Now, mm -hmm. let, me, let me talk now about some of the design decisions very quickly. This is the fun bit. Yeah. So, special saving throw. As a, as a designer, I'm going to give a creature a saving throw, but not an item. I'm going to give them a saving throw even if they're a willing recipient because they may change their mind after being touched. Mm. And because it's only a first level spell, so we want to hamper its utility and effectiveness. We want to keep it weak. Material components. Censored out of all early spell design 
by TSR, Code of Ethics, are almost all mentions of Castor's bodily fluids. Earwax, <laughs> mucus, tears, blood, spittle, and of course, dirtier secretions. Um, <laughs> But they were often in the original design write-ups because they appear again and again in real-world historical lore and folklore. Judge mm -hmm. D, witch magic, fairy fay magic, etc., etc. They're they're in a lot of fairy tales. You know, somebody weeps into a thing and it causes it it wipes out a magical effect or whatever. So we went to it again and again, and the the faithful editors of TSR took it out again and again because you know can't corrupt America. Um, <clears throat> Uh, now, note that this spell could readily be upgunned to a second level spell if it was given another side ability, such as making a mundane item magical for two hit purposes when cast on it. So a normal arrow or dagger or sword bearing a false rune now counts as a magical arrow or dagger or sword. The spell should increase in level again if, fall, if a false rune also conferred, say, a, a plus one to hit to an item it was cast on, though to anchor a level increase, I then want to add yet another odd, weird side ability, like the ability to make all magical writing, glyphs, runes, and symbols it's brought close to, say within six inches, glow into clear and readable visibility, and a slight duration increase, like a base six rounds plus the caster's le uh, level of number of rounds. And I'd likely differentiate this version of the spell by calling it something like Otoluke's Enhanced False Rune, or something of the sort. So as a designer, those are the sort of things I'm thinking about when I'm playing with a spell. Wow. So mm -hmm. I immediately went to my head um, was... I I can negate I can immediately negate an explosive rune spell with it for a temporarily amount. So I let's we can get in, we can open this, or we can get in through the door now. Because instead of using a third level to spell magic as a first level effect, right? I, I immediately went when you started doing that retracing or whatever, and, and, and thought to myself, well, now a lower level mage, if they have this, they could take you know they can take out one of those really nasty traps, you know. Oh oh no, it'll still go off. Oh. <laughs> uh, all it does is warn you, hey, there's writing here. Okay. And you can't okay. you can't tell what it is. Okay. And and it's it's got magic that okay. slumbering, lurking magic okay. connected to it. So if you then metagame or your character has experience in game that says, wait a minute, we've run into explosive runes before, then they can turn around and tell the party, hey, you know this just might blow up in our faces because there's writing on here. Okay. But it tells them nothing else. It doesn't okay. stop it operating. It just doesn't go off when you put your, when you draw your thing with your forefinger, it doesn't set it off immediately. But if you then okay. do whatever it does that the, Got it. that it's supposed to protect, it will still operate. Oh yeah. It'll still up because it's too low level a spell to do that. Okay. That's awesome. Ed, that's just, and the level of detail on that is fantastic mm -hmm. too, man. Just, uh, you know, uh, Anna, what are your thoughts? Oh, I think it's a great one. And and I love spells that, that have that kind of utility that adds a little bit of sprinkle to the world and, and are not necessarily combative or, or, or stuff like that. It, it's, it, yeah, I, I really like it. I reminds me of one spell that I forgot to add to my Patreon post that I made called True Token. And and that is a spell that I I, I was realized that how do organizations and, and, and various people in the fantasy world have meaning in the real world, we have identity cards. How do they verify identities of each other to strangers? If you want to send a messenger or, or you want to say, I'm a member, one thing that you can do, you can tattoo or you can scarify or something like that, but that can also be fairly easy uh, forged, so to speak. And, and, and some people, you might want to have something that is obvious once you see it and under operation but otherwise it's hidden so to speak so so i i realized i i created a cantrip called true token and that's something that that wizards or 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 clerics it can be used either divine or arcane so to speak and then you take a small item a coin or a little pe pebble or it could be almost any item as long as it's a durable item that is fixed so to speak and the caster 
cast the spell on and makes the device that little thing uh, magical and and tell someone else to hold it and that person should say their name and it's also tied into something i use in my campaign called true names every creature has a spirit soul has a true name that is kind of a combination of all its actions and stuff and you can kind of find out and a part of that true name is stored into it so the item recognizes the person and the name so so then you that person or the the caster can store the item or you can give it to the person and when the person holds up the item and speaks its name the thing glows if it's the genuine person so to speak so someone else takes the item and try to do it so so someone who knows the name of the person and and knows what item to look for so it's it's like a, a one of these kind of uh, in modern day it you have like a ver second verification thing it basically works like that but the fantasy version of it and it's i i made it a cantrip and it's a transmutation and it, it, it i made it for 5e so it takes one action to cast and the range is of course touch meaning the caster needs to touch the item and and the, the target is a small persistent item and and the components is verbal somatic and and material meaning the component you have and the duration is instantaneous meaning it lasts until dispelled and it can also be detected as magic if you detect. It doesn't shine out magic, but if you detect magic, you will notice that it's something transmutational with it, so to speak. So, and and it re it requires some some real fancy magic in order to figure out who it belongs to and all that, so to speak. That that requires high level magic. Otherwise, you could just find out that it's been transmuted into. It could be a nistal magic aura for. For for whatever, so to speak. That's one of these little utility spells that I invented to to be used, so to speak. It's very very cool. Yeah, both of them. Nice. So Ed, so so you you basically this this spell's new, right? Correct. Yep. Well, yep. So we have six of them tonight. Six new spells. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you have them written down, and you'll just send yeah, them to me. Yeah, I, I will send them to you. That is yeah. so wonderful. So. You thought process wise, how let's let let's discuss this. How'd yeah. you come up with this? You like what was you saw was the hole after 40 years or 50 years, <laughs> the hole in the spells and yeah. how you came about. Yeah, I want to hear that. Uh, the thought mm -hmm. by thought since you're so yeah. analytical with that. that uh, spell. well, okay, there, there are okay at the beginning of the game, okay. At the beginning of, say, when we the game has progressed far enough to the player's handbook. So we're getting a coherent um, sort of Vancean spell system with lots of spells laid out in front of us. And they're in one spot in the rules as opposed to scattered in dragon articles and so on and, and modules. We're starting to get like, hey, a spell roster in front of you. The In the early things, there are spells like read magic comprehend yep. languages yep. right mm -hmm. so you could copy something you found but it it's beyond your power because you're just a lowly first level magic user or whatever you can you can copy it into your a blank page of your spell book and and try and find out what it is later and i'm thinking okay false rune just sounds cool it does <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. so what what can i take this because I'm, I'm trying to do quirky and cool and fun what can I add to the game that sounds like this? Um, that that is uses this name to do something cool, and that's basically where I start and go nuts. And sometimes I'm not going to come up with anything that I want to add to the game, and I'll just put it away for later. And maybe later me will come up with something because of something that's happened in life or play at the gaming table or whatever, and I now have new input. And my brain goes, hey, what about this? Um, you know, so, yeah, that's basically how I came up with it. Uh, it, it it's fantasy. It's not the real world. So um, nobody's going to be harmed in the making of this. So I can, <laughs> I can noodle around with fun stuff. And if I noodle around with something and it's silly, well, I have to save it for a silly game or not use it at all. I don't have to inflict it on the rest of the world just because I came up with it. That's the, the scientist's mistake. I can do this, so therefore I must do this and inflict it on the world. No, nope. no, I don't. I can hide it away. You know, I can do like Terry Pratchett did 
and command in his will that somebody else crush his hard drive with his unfinished books on it so nobody will be going ahead and trying to complete them because as far as he was concerned they weren't ready for prime time you know so i can do that um and and i will but but it, I'm always thinking away because that's what I do. I live in the realms in my head because I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, officer, I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah, there. Th- I'm always thinking. So something popped out, and and you gave me the chance, so I took it. That's it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, and I have an affinity. If you all seen and chose for using Ed's own spells against him, because I think that's fun. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> or you know, because Eric Moore until that day he still calls Flesh River that shitty spell because you know, <laughs> because of breaking all the limbs and stuff. But um, two things. Larry Dixon says, "Howdy up there, Ed. Hugs from Misty and me." Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, hi, I, Larry. And then the other one, I want to get this see. question because it's going to go way far away. Uh, you know, um, uh, Big Mac said, "If." Archlet Sharinger Seltzun from SGR One Lost Ships would have known spells from Greyhawk's ancient past before she lost her spell books. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a simple one word answer there, Max. So there you go. Very cool. Quench is a good civic spell. Mending and, and make whole plant growth is given. Yep. I I agree there, uh, Dale. So all right, so that's number one. False rune. We got that. Mm-hmm. So um you know, uh, I, I have a question on one that I found so utilitarian and useful. I, I want to make sure it's yours. And I may have asked you this before, and I apologize if I did. Arnvin's Unseen Limbs. No. It's not, not you. mine. Okay. Oh. No. Okay. All right. Conjuration Summoning. It, it says, when Arnvin's Unseen Limb is cast, the magic user causes an invisible limb to come into being. This limb may replace a missing limb or may be used to create an extra one. The invisible limb functions exactly as a normal limb and it lasts six turns per level, so an hour per level. For example, a limb could be uh, used on cork potion. So basically, say a, a, a fighter gets a leg cut off and you don't have any way of getting it back, and that fighter can now function. It's a fourth level magic user spell. It's create, basically a, a conjuration summoning spell. Okay. All right. There you go. I, I'm, I'm, I gotta figure out who wrote that. Then I gotta, I gotta do some deep. Because once again, I photocopied that out of a Dragon magazine years ago. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I don't know that on that one. So. Um, and, and before anybody from Watsy who's listening goes, oh, you photocopied something out of no. Gary said we should. Absolutely. We should build our old spell books because mm-hmm. it would be as cool as doing it in the game. Oh my he, gosh! Yeah. He recommended that. He said, won't this be cool when you're literally taping or gluing Mm -hmm. spells into pages of a scrapbook, say, that you bought at some five and dime store um, to build your own spell book. And then you can be really proud of it because it represents your adventuring. False rune. uh, For an fandom. Just, Just, yeah, pattern weave. That's a wild mage spell. Which uh, yep. so you take a, a glass uh, bowl breaks, you can see what it looks like, or a ripped up message or whatever. That's another real good one. It's in the Wild Mage book. Um, and I think we went through this. Uh, Zeb Cook did the Wild Mage, but not the Elementalist. I forget who did the Elementalist, but uh, yeah. So um, all right, other great. Other great, um, and Bill, you're on right now. You know this. The other great one of, of Ed, Seven Sisters is one, but this is the other one. The spells in here are awesome, Ed. I'm assuming you wrote them all. <laughs> yeah, right? of course. Right. I wrote them all. So yeah. I just, yeah, I just used on the party the Acid Bolt spell, and I gave it as, on an amulet as a magic item where they can use it like once per like week or whatever as, as a spell effect off. Um, so here's another great Ed spell here. It's called Acid Bolts on page 52 of Drow the Underdark. All right. I have a nice piece of uh, drizzle on the other side. It's acid Bolt. All right. I'm not going to put it up on the on the screen yet. Uh, surface Dwelling Wizards view this spell as an improved version of the Mel's Acid Arrow spell, but the Acid Bolt is a very old spell, though thought to date before the descent of the Drow. So it's okay. It's a really. Thank you all. We, we're adding a Titan Dice uh, set as a second giveaway. All right. Uh, so creatures struck by the splashes from the acid bolt within 20 foot radius takes two die four struck directly take four die four 
And, and the Acid Bolt does an additional one day four per round for every additional three levels of experience. So, um, and then they're saving throws on items and stuff. So, and the range of this is 200 yards. This is not a short range weapon. <laughs> they spell like Bell says an arrow is. So, uh, that's one of my favorites in here. Another one of my favorites in here, Ed, is continual fairy fire. Mm-hmm. It's like permanent. Yeah, baby. So, so I like having my drow to, 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 to just annoy player characters, cast that on characters. Because sure. Then they're going to be glowing all the, you know, whenever they go. So another great spell out of here that you, mm-hmm. that you wrote. Um, 100% everything in this book is yours? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Newt Ewell, who was the editor, asked me to do the tech. The, there's a two-page tech section in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, everything written in the book, I wrote. Yeah. So another question is in this book for your spell creation is there's a spell in here that is major plays a major part in the Drizzt novels, Zin Carla. Right? Mm-hmm. Where Zach Nafin becomes Zin Carla and becomes basically a, a, an active zombie, basically, right? With, with the yeah. spell. So how did you coordinate that with R.A. Salvatore? Or did you make it and then he use it or no, no. Uh, he'd already put it in the novels. Okay. So okay, it was, novels it first. was okay. yeah, and it was my job to then put it in balanced game terms. I may not have managed balanced, but it was my job to put it in the game. Um, from it had to match as nearly as possible what was what Bob had written on the page in his fiction, and at the same time be as balanced as I could make it in game terms. Okay. So it didn't become a, and you see, this is the danger because when, and it, this isn't a Bob problem. This is an all authors problem. We do something for a story need or a story reason. And we have to make sure we're not writing something Mechanics. that is too powerful for yeah. the game. Now there are, there are actual, um, exceptions to this and they never work out well the first exception was spellfire i was writing something that was deliberately overpowered for the game because the design philosophy in that edition of the game said there were things that players could not their characters could not do that you could put on the page and of course in a later edition of the game oh no you can do anything you can kill the gods and take their place you know so (laughs) so which is why which is the danger of believing the management dictates because later on they'll change their minds. Um, and to, to, uh, to a game designer, uh, that smacks to me of um, Spock in Star Trek IV. Um, oh my goodness, are you changing your mind? Why, is there something wrong with the one I have? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, and, and that's the problem. Um, but uh, Spellfire was a plot device to keep this young girl, this young, inexperienced girl alive for more than two pages when she's got this power that everybody in the world wants or everybody unscrupulous wants. And I'm trying to keep her alive for plot purposes. Um, And then there are three versions of Spellfire that were put into rules form because I was told to do it for a later product and I did it. And Skip said, no, no, no. He's made it way too under... And then redid it in another product. And I'm going, no, no, no. That's the whole point, Skip. I want it to be underpowered. I want limitations, limitations, limitations. And he said, yes, but the players at the table don't want limitations. Yes, yes, but that's (laughs) why you don't give a loaded gun to a child. (laughs) Right, right. Absolutely. Oh wow, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. I, I just, I always want to know uh, the chicken or the egg thing on that one. So now I know you were the, you were the egg, <laughs> on, on, on that, on, on kind of on that one. The chicken, like, uh, so Ari wrote it all up, and then you gotta just like figure it out so that it works. And you put because, um, it's it was cool at that time. You know, and I'm talking F, uh, Forgotten Realms, everyone. You know, uh, going off the Greyhawk thing, uh, but it was cool to see that spell. With a per, with an actual application that could be used in course of gameplay outside of what you saw in a book, you know, and 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 that was cool. So, yeah, really like that. All right. So, and we did that for all sorts of things. When you're given a product, sometimes it's in the product brief. You're what they called Exhibit A. You know, it's listed there. 
you will cover, you know, it's like one of a modern job description. You will meet the public with courtesy and tact. You will become our expert, you know. Um, but no, in those days, it would sometimes we would be told this has to be in the product. But more often, it's like, uh, we need a product. We need it by this completely unreasonable deadline. Um, <laughs> go, to, go to it. And then you you would read up the stuff and decide what should be in the product or what you wanted to make sure was there. That's your your reward for getting to write the product. I want to do this, you know, but hopefully you're putting in there that what most people will expect to see, because if you don't, they will certainly let you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and. I pull like in my campaign and a lot of my players are on, you know, this is the draw the underdark. It, it's, you know, it, it's, it's got that FR spin to it, but it's, it was easy to pull the, the Greyhawk elements out of it. It was not that hard, you know, to do that at all. And that's, that was the cool thing about the, about the publication, uh, you know, just some really, really neat spells in here. So I just wanted to shout that out, that it was a, um, it was a great, place for us to to grab things there it is here's continual fairy fire <laughs> yep <laughs> and, and so the, done. the one thing i <laughs> did deliberately in that book um i could not fathom how somebody living in a game setting could not know the name of the god they were worshiping so where gary had written elder elemental god it's like okay he's gonna have a name <laughs> right right because uh if i'm in the temple and I'm being expected to pray to this thing. I need to to utter a word, a name when I'm praying. I just got to. So I'm going to name it, and and that's why you got Gonadar. You know, I right. just, I just, I've got to name it. That's that's my druthers for writing this book. It's okay because you know you can have Gonadar in FR, and you can have El Elder Elemental God in Greyhawk, right? So yeah, it, yeah. it works both ways. So, uh, Anna, questions. For, on this, yeah, I, I think that was a really uh, cool, and I totally agree that God that is worshipped, so to speak, needs to have a name among his worshippers. Then they might be a, a more kind of a common, like they, they they can just use a term because they might be allowed to not mention the real name and stuff like that. But he should have a name or, or at least a label of some sort that is used in prayers and and stuff. But on the other hand, the, the enemies might call it something completely different because they. They might not want to utter the, 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 that despicable name or the hated name or, or the, the feared name or whatever. So so in Greyhawk called Nerul, they might not say. They might just say the death <laughs> will come or the black one will come or the harvester or something. And Nerul might only be the cultists themselves who say it and stuff. So 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 there is many. But I, I like that idea that that and, and to give give the, the god a name, so to speak. But I think it's something that you as a dm you need to figure out how you want to handle that in your campaign to add to the flavor so to speak and some people might be so terrified they don't even even if you torture them they don't dare to mention the name of the deity and and even cultists might only mention it to other proven cultists and, and not mention it to anybody else or something so that can add to the mystery or something to it my players were so yeah. scarred they were so scarred mm -hmm. from the deities demigods book they would they were afraid to say haster <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, here's the thing. What I was saying doesn't doesn't force you into no. one mode of behavior. I'm just saying mm -hmm. uh the a good design approach is to put yourself in the mind of somebody in the setting yep. as a worshipper. Mm -hmm. And what what would make sense to me in the setting? It doesn't mean you have to make the same design decision I made. It just that's always a good way to to mm -hmm. w step ahead with the design. Yep. Awesome. So, want to throw us another one there, Ed? We got six to go. Oh, sure. So. Sure. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm tracking out the time, and every every twenty to thirty minutes, we're throwing one out there. So. Okay. Well, I I'm gonna save. I know gamers, <laughs> so um, I've, ma I've, I've mainly written nuts and bolts spells because okay. they're useful. 
Um, but I know that gamers are going to be disappointed if I don't do a blasting spell. So I'm going to save the blasting spell to last. Yes. Awesome. And it's also it's also going to be a very low level blasting spell because that's that's what I was trying to do. And uh, the highest level of spells I think I wrote up today uh, is four, fourth level. That's right. And here's here's one of them, and it's a very limited spell. So prepare to be underwhelmed. Um, it's called deflect dispel. Abjuration, level four, range two inches. Okay, you know what edition I'm writing for now. Yeah, uh, um, yeah it's yeah. fine. <laughs> dur duration, special. Area of effect, special. Components, verbal somatic. Casting time, one segment. Saving throw, special. Okay. Ex explanation description. This spell enables the caster to deflect or move a forming or existing dispel magic effect away from the intended target area to a nearby one of the deflect casters choosing. It can be cast before, during, or after the dispel magic comes into existence. If before, it hangs ready until the caster activates it by silent act of will. The base chance for the success of a deflect dispel is 60%. For every level of experience of the character casting the Dispel Magic above that of the creature whose magic is to be dispelled or above the efficiency level of the object from which the magic is issuing, the base chance increases by 5%. So that if there are 8 levels of difference, there is a 100% chance. For every level below the experience efficiency level of the creature slash object, the base chance is reduced by 5%. Okay, five, okay. So nice. I wrote this. I wrote this to be the exact same edition of the game that Greyhawk Adventures is written in, because I thought, oh, that that way, if Jay likes it, he can just use it. He doesn't have to do any conversion. And you know, I'm going to use. I'm going next time we play, I'll throw at least one or two of these in. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so basically, this is that. This is your ultimate counter spell to a dispel magic prepped almost or instantaneous. So, which is really yeah. cool, because um, everyone. You gotta remember, non five e priests and clerics and all they're buffing themselves like crazy, right? Before major mm -hmm. fights, all over the place to the one spell, and that dispel magic goes off in that forty by forty area, and boom, and you're and it's gone. Uh, all, all those spells. So this is kind of a, you know, fourth level is nothing to sneeze at. That's higher level than the dispel magic itself. Yes, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. If I'm gonna mm -hmm. monkey with dispel magic, the counter spell has to be a higher level. I like and it. that means that means it's only going to be used by people who are expecting to face this, because otherwise they're burning a spell slot that they could otherwise use with something far more you, widespread in its usefulness. So I'm going to ask a question here because I really like this, Ed. Should we attach this to a spellcaster? Like, I know you have certain ones in your world, like Darson or Dalton or one of the Seven Sisters, or do you just want to make it generic? Uh, why don't you pick the Greyhawk caster you want it to go that with? That is great. And we haven't even gotten there yet. Alan's given me four, three whole pages of... Uh, he, you have the Autoluk ones, but I got Tensor and draw, uh, Tensor Nystal. At, I may have Drawmage, too. Uh, um, and... and uh, um, I look uh, spells uh, updated. So with the, with those two, I got a whole pages of them. So maybe we'll go over a couple of them. All right. So I will attach this to an. Before you all get this, you'll see a a, a, a circle of eight uh, Greyhawk mage. And it may just be nice and throw it into I look so you can use it. We'll see. But then again, you can okay. get other spells too. Like you can get. Remember, you're you're just main characters. I look. You can use a tensor spell if you get it, or a nice stall or draw mage, or you know, uh, big B. You can still do, use that. So, all right, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you so very much. No the, problem. I yeah. mean, if I was doing it for me, I'd look at their spell list and say, who's most neglected so far in the game, and then I'd say, but does this fit that guy yeah. or gal? And and if the answer was, if I can make it fit, right. I'd go with whoever is who doesn't have as many spells yet, but that would be just me. That's, that's what I'd be looking to do. Yeah. yeah it may be, it, it, I'd have, it probably, I wouldn't do, give it the tensor. It would be either a nice stole or drawmage, I think in yeah. that case. Yeah. Out of those two. But we'll and then, then I would, in the back of my mind, I'd be thinking of adventures that I might write using one of those. And would this fit? Because that will decide who I put it with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. 
Well, yeah. so Gargamon has a, yeah, but remember, that's a ninth level spell, Gargamon, so that's really pushing it. You'd like that spell to also affect Morning Cain's disjunction. Now, remember this. That's a ninth level spell. You need to be 18th level to cast that to permanently disjoin magic items. So, if, we don't have that many 18th level wizards running around in, in my Greyhawk campaign after 42 years. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, a fourth level spell really should not be able to interrupt a ninth level spell. No, no, definitely not. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, that's another design thing that when you're working on all this stuff over the years, there are some, there are some written and unwritten rules. And yeah, that's one of them. Right. Um, a deflection, which is what I did here, is different from a negate or whatever. Hey, but still, you do not want huge level imbalances because that means that spell is doesn't match the power level. And it is it is um, it is understandable if gamers at the table get angry when it gets used That's against them when it doesn't work in their minds. It has to feel right. Maybe as well, Bromium. Maybe I'll assign that to a, a a PC, an NPC, or something in the can. We'll see. But I, yeah, I won't do it with all of them. But that one I like. I like that one a lot because that I can see that one coming into gameplay immediately with especially with our miniature play style. And all the buffing that my guys are buff hounds. You've seen that, Alan. Uh, no, no, yes, uh, they they buff like crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's ninth level gargamel. It is, it is, it's top of the line on that spell. So, yep, yeah. oh, very cool. So uh, great spell, Ed. That's a great, great spell. Hey, no Love problem. Love that one. Yep. Love it. Let me flip over. Yeah, and I will, I will me email you the file of all of these spells when we're done. Awesome. Thank you. For or near the end uh, when 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 i get this computer to work uh -huh. <laughs> so one of the books that i uh, have used forever in my grail campaign and I, I throw these spells all the time Ed, in, in that adventure group is the seven sisters book <laughs> not knowing the background so uh, as much and i wish i you know more but um they all have their own and i'm trying to find where's the list this is probably at the very end if i recall of of their spells That's rare and unusual spells used by the Seven Sisters. Uh, where's the list? <laughs> I forget where the list is. At the beginning? Is it at the beginning <laughs> of the list of spells? You know what? I, I think I manually went through and utilized a, 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 and took the ones that I liked out. Um, like, we, the Laryl spells are cool. Uh, uh, what's uh, what's one? Laryl's so Raging... Page, the spell list is on page 62. 62, thank you. Yeah. So let's take a look at this. This is rare and unusual spells by. Okay. All right. So yeah. Now Ed has used Ed in his in my game has used a spell on here multiple times. Ed, many mm. jaws. Yes. <laughs> How did I know? I'm really stretching. Uh, yeah. Do you remember what your idea for that one was when you came up oh, with that Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, it, it's a twisting of a uh, real world. Uh, my dentist, when I was a little kid, <laughs> was my uncle. He was actually my cousin. But because he was uh, two generations older than I was, he was a courtesy uncle. As in, you were instructed as a call him Uncle Morley, not Cousin Morley, because, you know, he was like 40 years older than I was, you know, so the polite thing to do. And uh, because he was a dentist back in the days of giant iron chairs that the floor had to be um, shored up if you were on the second floor for the dentist, uh, he was also in the era when they had a, a pair of plastic false choppers bigger than your head with a a uh, heavy spring-loaded um, joint at the back so he could demonstrate proper brushing. Uh, they, of course, changed their minds completely later with brushing and flossing, but at the time. Um, and he could hold it open and show you what back tooth was you had to concentrate on or you'd been bad about or whatever. And I remember that thing because I desperately wanted to play with it. To which uh, my my um, mother thought I was very weird. Um, 
because she's going, you don't want that in your mouth, Edward, sort of thing, you know. And 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 I'm going, <laughs> and <laughs> my father is going, oh yeah, he's my son, all right. Uh, <laughs> nice. So I, I was vaguely remembering this thing and thinking, wouldn't it be cool if? Be careful what you expose your children to in life because it's going to affect their D&D design decisions for everybody to suffer through across the globe. <laughs> That's awesome. Just uh, disembodied teeth about gums, lips, or gullets, and the teeth, they're snapping, snapping, snapping at you. It's just, it's so awesome. Uh, it just is. It's, it's a really, it's a six round spell duration. And it just, uh, you know, if you're ninth level cast, you got nine teeth snapping around. It, yeah. Much better on monsters. The, the way the spell is written, much better on monsters than, than, than uh, adventurers. Because the adventurers reduce one point per each jaw of magical plus of the armor worn. So, you know, if you got, you know, like a plus two plate mail, then, it, you know, you're only doing um, one to two points in, in, instead of one to four per, right? Because you're doing a minimum of one per. But, you know, monsters, it's perfect on because they're just chopping, chopping at their, you know, flesh and stuff. So, I, if I recall that one adventure, Ed, you took out um, Displacer Beast with it pretty handily with the Many Jaws spell. And then uh, we had multiple Many Jaws spells going on in the last one, if I recall, too. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Uh, multiple ones so that was that was that was fun but I, I, it's amazing you remember the story on, on the spell um, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, the memory is funny you, you remember the tags to some things and other things as you get older and your your mental warehouse of memories fills up uh you can't call them to mind and then there's always a trigger that calls them to mind like smell like if you smell a smell you haven't spelled for like 30 40 years like you, you, you're rooting around in a closet and you find a long dead ant's clothing and her perfume clings to it. And suddenly, bang, your memory's back. Because that was the trigger. Wow. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it could be any kind of sense of something that, um, that comes, come, you know, comes at you, um, which is really uh, interesting. So uh, you've also used steel dance too, right? Yeah. That's another one right here. Uh, it's a t only a two round duration, but this one causes four whirling long swords or scimitars to appear out of thin air and fly about inside the area. In fact, Thacko of six, six points of damage plus are considered plus four magic weapons. You know, uh, it, it, you know, so it's just it's a cool spell too. Uh, uh, another one, and there's a lot of great spells in, in this book. Fantastic, you know, and I love but using the, them. The danger is you're always walking the line between coolness and overpowering. True. Spell true it is the hardest thing to do you have to behave and i and i hate doing it because i always want to give more but you can't you have, always have to think about am i unbalancing the game too much and i mean there are imbalances built in magic missile is too powerful for its level but gary is giving the poor magic user who can die from falling backwards because he has so few hit points He's giving him one thing to make him more than a torch holder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because sleep is probably, air effect wise, sleep's probably the best bang for the buck at, the, at low level, you know, because they're getting all, you know, four to 16, zero, you know, goblins or whatever. Uh, but, but magic missile's the one, no save, you know, you're boom. Yeah. Well, sleep, there's no save too, but. Uh, it, yeah, just... but but every every DM worth their salt starts throwing things at you that won't be affected by sleep. True, true. For whatever reason, and you just go, "Why am I carrying?" I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, now I know Adam's got a couple IU spells coming up, and they're going to mix. I us have in. a bunch of spells. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, so here's I have taken some of these out of the Seven Sisters book, like this one, Sword Chun, and it's Necromancer only. All right, so it goes into here, and it's Necromancer, I think it's, what's that, fourth. And this is a great spell, where the Necromancer could take a dagger, stab him or herself with it, takes the initial damage, and then they take one point of damage every other round. They're immune to bladed weapons now, while the spell's on. And that drives the, the players crazy. But I'm like, I'm not giving <laughs> this to regular magic users. Right, there's certain spells like it's a necromancy spell, it, and I have a class. Now, if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a necromancer class, well, maybe 
in that case, it's a different story. But I, I, this was what was so great about some of these spells, like Shadow Dance and some of these other, they fit in the Shadow Mage that I have. So with all these different classes, it was it was perfect. But I love the Sword Shun. That's another great spell out of this book, you know. So uh, balance wise, the the one the one spell and Bill's if he's on still knows it. There's one spell I always I told you this before Ed, that I thought was way overbalanced because mm-hmm. it was second level. And mm-hmm. what did I do? We just made it fourth level. And yeah. you have it still. And that's, yeah. and that's Agonizer Scorcher, right? Yep. Because C- cause I, I think on the target, it's no, it, there's no save. On the target, it gets hit, if I recall. But anyone moving through the beam gets a save for half damage. So I think it's 3 to 16. And yeah. this is for two rounds. 3 to 16. Then you move and run that beam through all the rest of them running. I think your guy has this, too. I think we used this spell, too. Yep. And ran yep. it through. Yep. And you're right. Okay, so it's a little. You think it's a little overpowered? Change the level. Change the change the damage yeah. on the spell. It's okay, right? You know, and that's yeah. and that's yeah. yeah. Every DM should always do that because we fall into playing styles around our table. So something that I don't think is gross or overpowered, you will immediately think is because of what happens at your gaming table. So change it for your gaming table. You know, just because I put it in my article or in my game, it doesn't mean I'm right. Change it. That's the beauty of the game. Exactly. And it's okay. You know, and yeah. there's reasons for everything. You find balance in your game. You find, and, and once again, these spells are not hard to convert to 5th edition, too. If you're 5th edition DM, there's no reason you can't convert these spells to 5e. Someone may yeah. have done it. Someone may have already done it uh, with these. I, we know Joe Block did the Greyhawk, the Greyhawk, um, uh, uh, adventures book spells, but someone may have done Seven Sisters or one of these other books. You just you know take a look, and you may you may find someone who's already um, uh, converted. Oh, side tech, thanks. All right, so here's here's the last one we'll talk about: Flesh Shiver, one of my favorites of all time because it's a different save. It's not a normal spell save, which I love. Uh, it's a con save. So if you get a mage with like nine con or eight con, and they got like five saving throws, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, neck. I mean, come on, that is great. Once again, necromancers only have this in my game. So we're not having standard mages uh, who are ninth level with fifth level spell running around breaking necks and arms and limbs and stuff. So yeah, Ed isn't always right, Moose says. Ed is mostly right all the time. But that doesn't mean it can't be tweaked here and there. <laughs> Mostly right all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. a lawyer speak for yeah. saying the same thing as you always write. And I <laughs> like using Ed's. That's why I like using Ed's spells against him. The perfect ultimate play test to see what happens. Yeah. You know. Ow. Yeah. So, um, but this spell is just so awesome, and it was great because when our, our first Greycon Ed, I had Luke Gygax, I had uh, uh, Eric Mona. Um, Steven Chenault playing, and we had the we had the Necromancer, um, and they had a Pearl of Power, and they recast it, and then and and, 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 and Eric's like, "You're gonna cast that shitty spell again on us? Oh my god!" Because remember, it was it was Ralph Mike's character. Remember, Anna's like, "Snap, snap!" Ah! Oh, it was awesome. That was the one. That was the one where Venerian Forge stole the tongue too. If mm-hmm. you remember that, yeah. Yep. At yeah, the so. end. Yep. Yep, Larry, thanks. Uh, so, uh, just some unbelievable spells in this book. Please check it out. Um, uh, you know, and you can probably, I'm assuming this is on drive through, so you can get this on drive through if you don't have a hard copy. Um, but just some great spells going way up in high level. So, um, when you're making this, there's Ghost Grail. When you're making this, Ed, was it just like they said, we need a compilation of all the Seven Sisters? No, I went to Tim Brown who was creative manager at that time uh, on my annual Gen Con visit to uh, TSR. And he said to me, hey, Ed, what do you want to do this year? (laughs) And you see, I was quite familiar with the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, um, which occurred every year. And that was the famous thing, so named because of when in the year it happened. Yeah. um, Where they they put products up against the wall and shot them because everybody would submit their product ideas. And there's a finite limit to um, press time and paper that you can afford because, you know, this is the era of paper products only. Um, 
and you can't have infinite word counts. There are no pixels to save you. And uh, they would regularly shoot products. And products like Elves of Evermeet, the, um, that fell off the... Yeah, the uh, stairs. Yeah, I, that fell off the schedule, I think, three years in a row before it got okayed for the, the seventh year. But I, I said to Tim, well, you know, here's what I'd really like to do. A spell called uh, a product, a book called Seven Sisters, and it would just be a spell compilation. And his eyes glowed, and he said, "Why don't you start work on it? We'll find a contract." So nice, awesome, yeah. Yep. Oh, just uh, <coughs> it's just uh, a great. Here's another. All right, so here's another spell on this. This one is for my wild mages only. Wand weird, perfect, ah! <laughs> right? Because this one. Um, this one creates a, a visible sphere of protection that, that basically it keeps you uh, it keeps you wand effects do nothing on but this is a high level spell this is seventh level so it feels like it's a good thing for a wild mage to have and that's why I gave it into the wild mage class here so uh, any being destroys a wand weird sphere by means of the spell magic this attack automatically lashes out the spelling caster so yeah it, it's just it's a really because of all the bounce backs and stuff I saw it as a, a, a wild mage spell and that's where I put it in my game. So, is Ed aware that there is an area in London called Seven Sisters? Yes. Yeah. There's also oil companies called the Seven Sisters. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I was aware of both those things before I came up with my Seven Sisters. But you see, originally, I didn't have a collective name for them. And there were six of them, not seven. And oh. TSR wanted a seventh. A... Huh a silent sister to be for story purposes. And that became um, the drow sister, the last one, which is why she was initially referred to as simply as a dark disaster. Cause I was being mysterious. Cause I said, look, if I'm going to like put her in products, you know, initially not this product, uh, I have to, uh, we can't be playing in any games with, Oh, we can't tell you her name. You know, <laughs> we can't, you know, because um, <laughs> we have to treat our readers with respect. They're they have brains. Yeah. Um. They're the smartest people in the world. They're buying your game. You know. So uh, we can't be pulling any of that nonsense on them. And well, they said, okay, well, skate around it by. Uh, we know you can skate, Ed. You're you're Canadian. You can skate. So uh, <laughs> I skated. <laughs> so, um. But but yeah. Um. So originally there were six of them, and then I thought, well, okay. Yes, there's the expression sixes and sevens, but the seven is the more cool magical number. Um, so I am not opposed to having a seventh. And I totally understand the idea of building something in for later, a, a wiggle. So, yeah, I said, cool. And they said, OK, so um, come up with a backstory. So I did for how all the seven ha and it's in there. Um, but, yeah, uh, the originally... There, there were six, not seven. But okay. yeah, I thought, okay, the seven sisters. And um, I, I actually, in the initial letter, because, yeah, it's so long ago, we were writing each other paper letters through the post. Oh, man. And I said, the seven sisters comes with extra oil. And Jeff Grubb got it, and nobody else at TSR got it. It was like, do you people pay no attention to world news? I guess not. <laughs> Because in those days, they were all about the Seven Sisters oil com companies and how e egregious their overpricing was, those bastards. So soon, none of us would be able to afford to drive cars because they were putting gasoline prices up to almost 30 cents a gallon. Yes. Mm -hmm. How dare they? Those were the days. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's, um, it's, the stories are just so fantastic. It's, it's such a great backstory. Love, love to hear that. But I, I want to hear Anna's spell. Yeah, yeah. All right, Anna, what we got? Okay. Yeah, let's. Uh, I, I, for my campaign, uh, I've done a, a bunch of, of, of spells because for, for IUs because I wanted IUs to have spells that the players didn't know about that were really yeah. thematic for him, so to speak. So we're going to start out with the low end and then go up, so I to should, speak. And these are all on your Patreon, so I have them snipped. Yes, oh, okay. oh, exactly. And they will be public for everybody afterwards. So, so, so don't worry. You, you will all 
will get them, so to speak. I've changed a few things, uh, right, because I've read them through here. So there are a couple okay. of little words that have changed stuff. So go to my Patreon after this, and you can get the you can get the the the, the latest version, so to speak. So the first one is the pain of the old one. People who who remember when I've talked about the the uh, the, the the goats, there is a zombie goat that can stare. <laughs> this is the spell that that goat that they inferred on these poor goats so to speak some of these goats have that spell built into it and this is a spell pain of the old one that is not so much uh, it's not more than a nuisance against brave adventurers and stuff this is a spell that uh, clerics or priests of Ayus can 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 use to torment regular people primarily so to speak and and it's it's a first level spell it's a necromancy spell and and it's one action to 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 cast and range is touch and and target one creature and components somatic only only they only need to touch and 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 basically stare so so they don't need to to do anything so they can kind of do it secretly in that sense they don't need to to make much fuss, fuss about it they just want to to show their power so to speak and the duration is one minute concentration so they can only have one edition, yeah. one tar yeah it, fifth edition thing they can only have one target at a time so to speak so and certain spells that limits the use so to speak so and and saving throw charisma halves and it's kind of special too and it's a charisma save so it's more like the personality the spirit of of the person so to speak so 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 they need to to you need to be able to stand up for yourself in in some sense so so meaning the i use gives the the, the caster the fell and enemies energies to to torment the target and so you need to succeed on a, a melee spell attack against it but you often do it in in social situations so in that sense you will get an advantage because it comes out of nowhere so 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 you can surprise with it i wanted to to limit because it is fairly powerful it and and it deals 1d10 psychic damage per round for one minute and and it's powerful for a first level spell so but again imagine this is not supposed to be at powerful adventures this is supposed to torment poor villagers and 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 others underlings that don't have that much that fear the 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 priest to begin with so to speak that's the thing and he turns the target's uh, eyes red and bloody and 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 then you can the target can make a saving throw each round to suffer half damage and and the bloody eyes uh, persist until the spells end or the target takes a life that's the important thing the target can get out of the effect by killing someone so 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 it's it's a way I use always want to have bloodshed, uh, carnage, chaos, and and stuff like that. So so and and this theme will recur when we go to the higher level spells, so to speak. And 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 the spell can be ended with a remove curse, so to speak. You can probably end it in in some. Well, you can always end it by by distracting the caster enough that he loses concentration. That's that's the thing, so to speak. So so and and also that's something that I realized should be put in. It's only during the minute you only need touch when you cast the spell after that as long as you concentrate on it, it doesn't matter what the where the person runs that's need to be added in the text i'm going to add that in the text so so touch is only when you when you when you cast the spell the in to initialize it after that the creature can run run so you can touch someone walk away a little bit and then get get going so to speak with it I, so it's I, ba ba yeah i do appreciate you putting in by the way with all this mm -hmm. that i converted some of the spells from this book yeah. One of okay. Your favorites too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. see that. I, I converted some some yeah. of my favorite from from the necromancers into yeah, this two post to five, two. One to, yeah. yeah. To five five e and and it's also it's my f version of five e. So there's also the the conduit. That's how you are given the spell as a caster. It's a divine. So it's only <clears> you need to be a follower of of Ayus in order to get the the spell, so to speak. It's not arcane, but there might be other gods who find the spell and, uh, appealing, and they might give it to their clerics so 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 it might not be an exclusive in that sense but it needs the power of of some higher being in order to to facilitate the spell so to speak so it's not an arcane it's not a, a necromancer spell for necromancers arcane necromancers it's for for clerics of of, of i use and others who, who would facilitate the, the spell so to speak the strain is fiendish in my campaign meaning it comes from from a being a, an evil being that sends it to you and it 
taint is evil. When you cast it, you will be detected evil by paladins and, and other stuff like that. So so it will you will suffer that taint, so to speak, by casting it. So so that's the first low level kind of just tormenting underlings and subjects, so to speak. That that's the spell. So it's it it's it's fairly powerful because it it it's 1d10 for 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 six rounds so it's it's fairly powerful for being a, a first level spell but it also has severe limitations so to speak so it's a it's a useless spells against a, a, a ready powerful foe it's kind of useless but it's very good at tormenting things with things with low saving throws and and who are scared of you so, so yeah, that well, way, yeah, that you, you, you can kill commoners fairly easy with this <laughs> spell because you can, yeah, you can kill off and, and torment them and, and send them to a tormented death, so to speak, which is the whole idea of the spell. So, yeah, it's getting, you're getting disturbing, yeah. Anna, and your mm -hmm. thoughts are with yep. the Asians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get in, just like Ed said, I'm trying to live, get into the head of Iusian priests and, and, and stuff, meaning how they think and how they operate, so to speak, and how they do it. So, that was the first level spell, and then we, then we go up the scale. And I have a couple of ninth level at the end here, so so we get to the juicy stuff at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, detect mm -hmm. death is like a you yeah. Know, detect that's death is life. one that, that yeah. I've just converted from yeah. and and adjusted a little bit from from the necromancer book, but it's basically an arcane, and this is a necromancy spell that both arcane and divine casters can 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 cast that can cast necromancy. So so someone who who taught and and taught himself or herself or someone so so the classic necromancer wizard type can can cast it too, and also various gods, including I use gives that spell. To, to their clerics and it's a spell to to so within one mile you can you can detect if someone dies and and which is, can be very useful if you're a necromancer and looking for material and 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 raw material and also i use the priest wants to know if someone is out killing things yeah. in their territory it's very important to know if there is violence happening outside of their site might be useful to know so to speak so it's a spell that has concentration again Again, for 10 minutes so so it's and it's a first level spell it's powerful due to the the range one mile that therefore i put the concentration limiter into it so to speak in order to give it the the the, rent, the, the range so to speak and it, the range is always from yourself onwards so 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 therefore the, the so the area of effect is rather one mile but I, I wrote it in range because it is and and the target is self so so I, I put it that way and and it's also a vis, a visual somatic and material and the material is a sensory organ of a creature of an animal or or, or whatever that you need to sacrifice in order to, to do it's an ear or an eye or, or something similar from, from from a creature and you can also this spell it's also uh, it's it's useful to some degree by itself, but it's also a spell that is useful with another spell called Corpse Link. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of other spells that are going to add into it. Corpse Links is basically a spell where a necromancer or an evil priest can connect its senses to a corpse and see and experience the world through an undead or, or a corpse or, or like a, 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 a mindless undead, so to speak. And then you can, I can, I will add other things to, so, so they can do other things through. So they can animate a skeleton or a zombie and then act through it and stuff like that at higher level. I haven't got to all of them yet, but that was the idea. So, so the corpse length and the detects death are, are from the Necromancer's handbook. And I came up with a whole system of spells that I will put in, in use there, so to speak. So, so the corpse links is another first level spell, also has a range of one mile. So you can you can first cast the detect death. When you de once you detect the body, you can instantly cast the corpse links and it will dismiss the first spell and you will actually be able to to, to see through and hear and so on through the corpse instead of just detecting it. So so that way it's it's a way of 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 using divination as a an Iusian priest, another evil priest and necromancers. And of course they are nec they're necrotic, meaning that they, they take their powers from the lower planes, so to speak. And there's also tainted evil because once you mess around with the dead ones like that, it's 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 seen as gross and 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 not particularly good, so to speak. Quick question: so, Did you know Steve yeah. Kurtz at all? He wrote this no. book, the complete book. Yes. Of okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did not. No. Okay. I'm just curious. It's a great yeah. book. 
great book. Oh yeah, it's 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 a fantastic book. Yeah. I just yeah, and 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 it needs to to be. There should be a, a fifth edition. So I'm I'm going to put through some of the spells. I think are are maybe not so suited for my campaign that much, but right. these spells definitely are suited for for my campaign. So so that those are the 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 low ones I I put in there. The and and okay, get, so, get us through yeah. wall of pain here, and then we're going to do another new okay. egg spell. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So the next one I did for for or yes. not that I converted from from actually it was made for third edition or three point five. I don't know exactly which book because I found it on a trove of of spells of third edition spells online. So I'm not really sure where it came originally from. But I I took the idea. I, I didn't look at the, the 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 stats from that spell, so to speak. So I made my own version. But there is a world wall of pain spell from third there might be others too but so i thought that you take the, the the i use because i use the is the deity of pain and deception and and just cruelty and and stuff like that so so you need to have a, a wall of pain and this is a, now a, a way for for the i use in clerics to up the game so to speak this is something that you put out there in order to 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 hold the enemy to scare a, a lot of enemies at, at once so to speak or to clear if there is a lot of protesters and riots in the street or something you cast the spell to to kind of shield yourself from the onslaught and then you can use other magic to, to take them out so to speak so this is primarily i use way of of, of casting in abjuration you 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 put up a, a, a thumb, something that makes you you can weed out the the weak ones and only the real powerful can attack you and it's again the necromancy so it's a fifth level spell, a necromancy spell, casting time one action, and range is long, 120 feet, and an area is a 60 feet sphere that you can erect for, or, or launch from within the casting range, so to speak. Uh, components is uh, vis uh, visual uh, and uh, verbal and, and somatic and focus. I use focus in my campaign, just like a third edition. So you, you need a, a, a holy symbol of I use and material a drop of blood. And concentration again, one minute, because it's a fairly powerful spell. And saving throw is a combination of charisma and wisdom that is special, because this one is a little bit tricky, but kind of cool in a way. So you fill an area with horrid energy that inflicts severe pain upon anyone who passed through it or into it. The area can be up to 30 feet in any direction from the spell's origins, creating a 60 foot sphere. The, the wall of pain can be detected as evil by using true sight or by perception DC 18 check. That's one of the things I use, want this spell to be visible. It's, it's supposed to be imposing. So it's kind of, you, you can see the, the like a dark shimmering or, or something and Dumb like question. a smoke or, or something like that. Yep. Dumb question. Can paladins detect evil in fifth edition? I don't even know. I mean, can the well, paladins? yeah, they, they okay. can. De yeah, a lot of people can, can detect evil. <laughs> okay. Yes, a lot of different ones. And okay. my campaign, various good clerics can do it various paladins almost anybody with good alignment that has can be given that from its deity that effect to 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 do it so to speak so a lot of of good clerics and paladins like creatures because i'm running classless now so so a lot of things that right. if you have a good god that protects you will will guide you so to speak that will be the the effect so to speak or you can just open your eyes and spend an action to to kind of clear, look for things and then you can detect nice. it as well yep so so i you, I want that's one of the things that I think is cool to add to spells, meaning how can the spell effect be detected or or stuff like that? That's something I often miss because that way it's cool to put in rules for that because to some degree, because that makes you as a DM to think or the, the caster to think and, and, and so on. So so then you can have certain you can get away with it against certain monsters, but other monsters not. Monster with true sight will see it on 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 sight, so to speak. They don't need to roll, they just see it. And then you have, so when it uh, affects, so affected creatures, they take uh, 1d8 plus 4 uh, points of psychic damage per round when they're, while they're caught in it, so to speak. Right, so it's a and, sphere. It's not really a yeah. wall. No, exactly. But yeah, I, I call it the wall, but it's, yeah, but you can be, you can form it like a long wall right. or you can, you for, it, it's up to the caster to, to so you basically cool. fill a, an area, so to speak, with it. And so you, you creatures also can make a saving throw and 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 are frightened on a failed save but they take damage no matter what so to speak so the the save is not 
whether you take damage or not. It's whether you are frightened or not. That's the thing, so to speak. So you take damage if you run into it, unless you are immune or resistant against psychic damage. Not that many creatures are because it's it's kind of it's more built on kind of almost like illusion it's it's more that frightening thing so to speak and and then if you fail to save a charisma save then you are uh, frightened and you forced to either retreat or you can try to push through you you can't stand still and and brave it out you either have to push through or you have to 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 um to, to run and 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 run back, so to speak. If you dare to push through, then comes the second effect, and and if you push through, then you 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 try to you try to push through. Then comes a wisdom save, because then it's like willpower. Do I want? Do I? Can I brave this and go through, so to speak? And and on a successful will save, you you take you suffer additional two d eight plus four damage. And if you fail the save, the, the wisdom save, then you take um, another 2d4. <laughs> so you take 4d4. So you almost guarantee to kill if you try to push through. Only the real brave ones can do. And if you fail the wisdom save, then you're paralyzed for a round as well. So so the, the risk is that if you are not really powerful and you try to brave through, you're being caught and and often die or you are at least you are at least paralyzed so so it's the iusians of weeding out if there is like a mass coming against them they can weed out the weak weak ones and target the 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 advanced <laughs> ones so it's a it's a way of scaring and 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 tormenting and and finding who the true enemies are so to speak that's the that's the the the, the effect of this spell it's not not wall of fire similar where you don't you're taking two die eight two die four if mm -hmm. you're within 10 yeah one i four if you're within 20 so it's not mm -hmm. like it's any different from the wall of fire spell so yeah yeah so it's got exactly. a similar effect it's, 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 it's just a different yeah, type it, of damage mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and the damage increase yeah. 1d8 per per slot above fifth so 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 you you can cast at a higher level and it will do more damage so it comes something if you cast it as a eighth or ninth level spell it will be truly and the good thing is ter no, no color characters are casting it no, that this is something that if you if if <laughs> I run an evil campaign, they can cast it, so to speak. So so it's it's one of these spells, and and it's a divine again. Right. You need an evil god. You take the power from an evil, powerful deity or or demon lord or or something similar like I use that that will grant it. And it's fiendish, meaning it the power comes from a god, so to speak. And it's of of course tainted evil. So when you cast it, you detect evil and stuff. So 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 that it comes. I I need. To change the 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 text a little bit at the end there it's on okay. on the save yeah so Everyone, I need we're all always it. tweaking which mm -hmm. is the great yeah. thing mm -hmm. so yeah so 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 that's the mid level of of Iusian spells so to speak once you get in and then we have the the big ones can we wait with them or or yeah let's uh, yeah let's do an yeah. ad, let's do Ed number mm -hmm. three out of six yep. we got a ways to go with Ed so number three uh -oh. Ed all right okay well let me bring the power level way down. It's okay. I'm sorry. No, um, that's fine. Uh, 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 tensor's tiny table. Evocation. I love level, it. Level one, range two inches. Not really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Written a uh, duration three turns plus one turn per level. Hey, thunder. Area of effect special. Components verbal, somatic material. Casting time one segment. Saving throw none. Explanation description. With this spell, the caster creates a horizontal table, a rectangular plate or inch thick sheet of force fixed in midair at a spot of the caster's choosing. It can be put against a floor or ceiling or atop a box to cover, block, or patch an opening. It can be visible, invisible, translucent or opaque as the caster wills and can shift from one to the other and change opaque hue as the caster wills over and over again until the spell expires the caster can end the spell instantly by silent act of will the tiny table can only be as long as the distance between the caster's nipples and only as <laughs> wide as half that distance it is smooth and flat without any lip 
and can support any amount of weight, so can be used as a step in midair for someone to climb or perch on. Oh, cool. Anything placed on the table remains visible even when the table is not. Other spells can be cast on the tiny table to make it glow, bear a glyph or rune, or otherwise serve as a spell focus. The material component of the spell is either a drop of mercury or a drop of water glass, silicate of soda, and a pinch of powder made from crushing a clear gemstone. And um, there you go. And just uh, it's just on the floating hit. disc realm type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. And uh, silicate of soda or water glass was known in Roman times. So I mean, you know, it's not like we're injecting modern science into this. That's awesome. And that's Ta-da. and it's got it's got its uses too. So, oh yeah. Um, I, and, and, I, just like anything, spells can be abused. Yes. And mm-hmm. people attempt to do that. For example, sorry, I know I don't think he's on. Um, but uh, we had someone in a, in a Castles and Crusades game use a tensor's floating disc as a tripping instrument all over the place. Right? And and it was knocking I was like, that's not what the spell's meant for, but Stephen allowed it and it's like whack, 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 knocking in your I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, so sometimes sometimes that that can happen. You know, hey, it's casualty, good to see you. All right. I haven't talked about many of mine. I'm going to do one here. Now, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to give you a little reasoning behind this. It's ninth level, and it's never been cast in my game. It may never be cast in my game. But when 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 uh, when I was making up my elementalists, I like to balance the classes with the same, roughly the same number of specialized spells. And I found water elementalists were low, were lacking spells. So I need to I need to uh, pump them up a little bit so i just said well you know if i ever have this really massively evil um high level one i could you know i always talk about i always talk about flooding hardbeat right on all the time mm-hmm. you know so here we go um and these are these are all this is part of this is the compilation of great nut spellbook spells that i've added in that's in here that's not photocopied so i just added it to the end it's called tidal wave yeah you get the idea mm-hmm. <laughs> This spell summons a huge amount of water in the form of an ocean wave. All creatures must save versus spells. It's my, it's, it, remember, this is ninth level. You have to be 18th level to cast this. Yep. Or take 8 to 80 points of damage, save it for half. Uh, or be not, and be knocked unconscious for three, 3 to 18 rounds. All creatures under 5 hit dice are killed instantly with no saving throw. Hey, Cloud Kill does that, right? So it's no different than a Cloud Kill spell, and that's, that's only a 5th level spell. Those failing their saving throw by three or more killed instantly. Simple. What, what's the area of effect? Meaning if you... 100 foot title... by 200 foot. Okay, and the water disappears. It doesn't go yeah, the water, and, and, and wet it, the whole It has to be cast in a, in, a, in, a, in a lake or it has to be oh, cast okay. where water exists. It doesn't oh, okay. come from out yeah. of nowhere. It doesn't Ocean, water. Yeah, it, just yeah, it has to be the around. water. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have a lot okay. of the details in here, but yep. yes. Because mm-hmm. it's it's in my J-speak notes yeah. here. I'm not giving mm-hmm. it out to anyone. So there you go. Yeah. Ninth level. Big deal. One spell. I, I I put that in just because I was lacking in the super high level spells for this class. And I just threw that one in there. Never been used in my campaign. Probably never will be used while I'm alive. I mean, I, I, we don't have an 18th level water on it, It's only that it's not a regular mage spell. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that happens where sometimes you need, as Ed said, you need to find, you need to fill spells. There's got to <laughs> be sp- there's spells that are missing, right? You know? No. Note the wording Jay used. Well, I'm alive. While I'm alive. So, yes. ne- I'm hoping... Necromancer Jay. Yes. Yeah. While I'm alive. I don't know if I'll ever have an 18th level water <laughs> elementalist in my game, but then again, you never know. So <laughs> just, it, it, but um, it's out there. Um, it's a possibility. All right. We're only halfway with Ed's, and it's already 924. So, Ed, let's go for number four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Okay. What shall I inflict on people now? Um, Oh, it let's go. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's go. Uh, oh, it's blasting time. Chain Meteor. Yeah, you said inflict, so now we want to hear it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chain Meteor. Evocation. Oh. oh. Level four. Range. Self. Duration. Special. Area of effect. Special. Components. Verbal somatic material. Casting time. Three segments. Saving throw. None. Explanation description. This spell enables the wizard to summon a small globe of fire 
size to fit in the cupped palm of the caster, which, when thrown by the caster at any target, the caster can see during casting, bursts upon impact and inflicts 2d4 points of fire damage to any creature or item struck. The target gains a the wizard gains a plus six bonus to hit with the fiery sphere, and it's considered to be a plus three enchantment to determine what it can hit. When the meteor bursts, whether or not it damaged a target, it spits out an identical globe of fire that darts at and follows, ducking and darting if need be, the nearest living thing that's not the caster of the spell bursts with the same fiery harm, 2d4 hit point damage, as the first globe, but striking at a plus 5 bonus and being considered plus 2 for to hit purposes, and spits out a third and last meteor that streaks at the next nearest living creature nice. that's not the caster, strikes at plus 4 and is considered plus 1 for purposes of what it can hit, deals 2d4 fire damage. The material component of this spell is a small lump of saltpeter, or a lump of ash from a magical fire, or any fire that's had a spell cast into it, or that's been in the area of effect of a spell. What was the level on that? Uh, four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool. little mini chain fireball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is, that, that's really neat. Um, I may make that. That would, that would be one. Uh, I probably would make that a general spell because there's a lot of general fire spells. I wouldn't put that in the elementalist realm. It feels feels like it's happens to be fire damage, right? But it, it's basically a meteor, right? Yeah, it's yeah, a meteor. So, it's a, uh, mm -hmm. I love I love that. So I want to do a call out here as well. I, I don't know if anyone can help me, but I want I want you all to uh, to see here. Uh, I've never done this before, and I just figured Ed would bring this up. So there's someone who made all these alpha spells in the Great Net spell book. The email is, is tjaden at blake.acs.washington.edu I, And I've tried, I've tried forever. Uh, Jason Nelson's a person. If anyone ever knows this person, that would be awesome. Um, Jason Nelson. Jason Nelson. Do you know? Jason yeah, he's Nelson? the he's yeah he's the 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 we've had him on the show. He's the he runs legendary games. What? That mm -hmm. are you sure it's the same Jason Nelson? I'm really? not sure about these. The, that's the Jason Nelson I know in in D and D circles. You so, mean we so. had him on the fancy mapping show? No, we've had him on on Gavin or, or or one of the yeah. I know him. I've met him many times. So yeah. Really? Oh yeah. He, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's the friends of Wolfgang Bauer and stuff. He's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he, uh, run, he runs legendary games. Can you reach out to him of... and say, hey, are you the alpha from the Great Net Spellbook? And see what he says. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. You, you can you can just reach him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, yeah. Oh, Curtis, he owes Curtis money. <laughs> Barnicky. So, uh, the reason I, I wanted to go over this one spell, which I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I don't think there are that many Jason. Right, well, let's give it a shot. Thing. Let's uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. reach out. Uh, so this yep. one's similar to that. Your spell you made. It's called Alpha's Night of the Leonids. And it's in my quasi elementalist. And it says uh, this spell can only be cast outdoors at night. All right. There you go. So too bad. It's not that, that you can't cast it indoors. Can't cast, which I love those kind of of, you know prohibitions on spells. I love that. It calls down a number of flaming meteorites to strike unerically any target within range. A wizard calls down one by four meteorites plus another one for every five levels of experience. It's a third level spell. Each meteorite strikes a single target and they, each of these lineages comes blazing down, striking for one by six plus one and an extra one by six plus one fire damage. Uh, uh, you know, so that's kind of a neat spell too, where you're calling meteors from the sky at nighttime. So I just brought that up. But and if it's the same person, oh my gosh, we've been mm -hmm. my group has been. I think it was maybe it was Living Greyhawk or something. We, he's been on one of our shows. Whoops. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Or or, or or something. I'm I'm pretty sure. Maybe, maybe I missed that. Maybe him and me was on a, on a Zoom call somewhere else. Yeah, I, I don't recall him. Yeah. Okay, that has been some. That has been somewhere else. If you have a connection and can reach out to him, hey, let's find well, out. Well, yeah, and, and yeah, he's he's yeah, he's. he's a great I would love. Yeah. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. That spell belongs to Wild Space. It's a good note. Remember Wild Space two spell. Uh, that's yeah. what I mean. You, you, post post the, the this name of the spell in Discord so I remember it. Oh, there's like so. uh, okay. I'll put it in your Discord. Yeah, put the yeah so I know what to ask for. Yeah. All right, so yep. we got through we got through four of Eds. We got two to go still. 
Um, Harper spells, Ed. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Harper spells. Let me go and get this book up here. I think, uh, please, please, please. Do I have it on here? I thought maybe I don't. I do. And of course, it linked over here to the wrong thing. The Code of the Harpers. So, did this come before or after the Seven Sisters? This one. Mm, this is. Can't uh, remember. Yeah, this is ninety three. I think this is after. Draw the Underdark is ninety one. And what did I do with Seven Sisters? So this is a later. I think this is, Seven Sisters is ninety five. Oh, it came before Seven Sisters. Okay. Cool. Um, so, where's I thought there were spells and spells. There's a lot of magic items in here. There's spells on page one hundred one. That's it. Okay, one hundred one. Let me go. Yep. One hundred one. There we go. Thank you. Where's one hundred? Okay, so. Or oh, page 100. Or yeah, there we one, go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a ninth level spell. Transforming to ninth level. Yeah. They start high. <laughs> All right. A few rare harpers down the ages have been called spell singers. Folk with the ability to cast spells entirely through dance or song. All right. So, uh, wow. All right. So, it's a ritual, basically. Yes. Okay. What does it do, the transforming tune? It's ninth level. <laughs> What I mean, does it do? What does it do? Like what? what yeah. What? What is its? What is its net effect as a harper? Here we go. Ch- targets and effects are selected by the will of the releaser. Uh, the powerful spell being cast a musical instrument to be released later by singing or playing. Okay. So it's like uh, it's almost a contingency spell. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's neat. Ninth level. So, in the old school, once again. You gotta be 18th level to cast this. So that spell, uh, he created a lot of content, not just yeah, absolutely a ton of content. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. All right, so spell singers are not necessarily bards, correct? They're that's a right. song oriented. Can they be almost any class? I mean, could like a yep. ranger ranger have that ability for ra- their, their, their spells? Sure. Or, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, later in the game, in the hands of other designers, it became a class because um, that was um, the fad during that particular edition of the game. But originally, in the realms, pre-D&D, spell singers were people, and most of the ones who had had this ability trained up happened to be female. Okay. But it was by no mean a gender based thing. And they had a well talent to conjure up magic by dancing with others. And this, these were magics that they could not um, manage by themselves. Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. Yeah. And what that means Two. is you can capture a spell singer as an adventurer or as you know a King Herod type. I'm going around my kingdom grabbing them. <laughs> and and they can't help you. It's not a won't, it's a can't. Because you need to put them with other spell singers. Okay. For for them to do anything. All right. And what this meant was That's cool. your unscrupulous villains couldn't capture somebody and force them to do things they had to be in concert with others and what that meant was you could have um a small rural village for instance could defend itself with say the local ladies going in secret to a cavern late at night and dancing and you know pulling a spell and manage something that none of them could manage alone, which was a way of explaining some of the stuff that happened in the realms. You know, you'd say, well, why didn't the orcs just eat them all years ago? They're right next door, you know, in this cavern. And of course, this is the reason. Okay. You had to have in-story, in-setting reasons for some things. 
I, I like how it says, Elminster warns us that all individual harbors command the most varied, powerful, and interesting collection of spells to, for use in a run Toral. No prizes for guessing which harper wields what, save thy continued survival. <laughs> yeah, so again, you're, you're encouraging people to role play as somebody would in the setting, which yeah. is don't kick the shoeshine boy in in this face <laughs> because he may just be able to mop the floor with you. That's cool. You know, in other words, behave, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and these are known transforming tune effects here on the next page of all the, po yeah. So, wow. Okay. I was, yeah. Ninth level. I was curious as to, you don't see this type. Well, there is, is it, Tome of Magic or Player's Option book, one of them, they start getting those um, communal priest spells. They're not called rituals. What the heck were they called? Uh, where you had like... Uh, you had Eldritch Magic no, and there was various no, other stuff that was yeah, more powerful it had, than... It yeah. had an asterisk next to it and it had a name okay. of it. Where uh, you, st you had to have multiple uh, priests casting the same spell together. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Ceremonies. Uh, I don't know if yeah, they're something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ceremony. I think. Yeah. yeah. Ceremonies. I think is a good word yeah. used for it. Yeah. And uh, so this seems this is almost similar, but in song, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Very very cool on that one for from the from the Harper uh, the Harper. This is another uh, very in, de in in detail book. Now it's not convocations. I, I'm almost positive it, uh, there are ceremony spells, but. Um, they had it had a category. I I, I never I hated using them because you know how many specialty priests do you have in, in the group together of the same? You know it, it's it's hard it's hard to use in, in the course of a game when you don't have multiple you know of, of the same spellcasting type. So and and some things are meant to be like that. They're yep. not meant to be for your party members to use all the time. Point. Yep. They're, yep. There. Yeah. Yep. You run into something and it's like. I don't know what we've run into. I've never encountered this before. Good, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's um, okay. Uh, no, that's wild magic. I will. It'll come to me. It's not a big deal. What the name of that was? Uh, those types. All right. So um, I got to swing this back down here because I got it opened up in the wrong one. And then let's go. Let's go do this. And all right, let's do your ninth level spells here. Okay, yeah, and it just have, goes right through the jugular. Ed. Yeah, I have two two ninth level spells that that are used by Iusian priest. One is the 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 dreadful dome of despair. That's an area effect spell, a large area effect spell. And the other one is exterminate, and that's the close up protection, last ditch defense that Iusian priest and and clerics use to, to <laughs> if things get really tough close up, so to speak. But let's start with the dome of 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 despair. That that's a, an Iusian priest. It's a ninth level uh, spell. Ninth level spell, and necromancy is the the school. And the casting time is one minute, and the range you cast it on yourself. That's where it always it, it comes from yourself. And the range and the area effect is one square mile around one mile from you, so to speak. So so it's it's a huge area of effect. And this is something that it's an offensive spell that that. Let's say Iusians are, want to conquer a town or they want to dominate the battlefield and they want to scare the bejesus out of, of everybody. How Iusians win wars, so to speak. And there's two two purposes of this spell. Both of them are sinister. One is to scare the bejesus out of the enemy and, and get them to realize that they are doomed. They, they're not going to survive this. They're going to die from it. And there might be likely that they will due to this spell. And also to make their own side, because this affects everybody, including the caster, if it goes really bad, so to speak. So so even the own side's troops are affected by it. And they need to go out and do something. Otherwise, they will perish too from it. So, so it's one square mile. The components to do this is verbal, somatic, uh, foci, foci again, focus. You need your your IUC and um, um, holy symbol and material, and you need to kill someone, an intelligent creature that needs to be killed as part of the casting the spell or an hour before, so to speak. So, so the caster needs to 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 kill something intelligent, preferably good, and 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 to to cast it that will be consumed as you cast the spell. 
the the con the, the the duration is one hour concentration, and that's the important bit. This not is not a quick flash and bang. This is an hour long spell, that uh, the concentration, and the saving throw is wisdom and very special, so to speak. So you fill a square mile. And and with horrid energy again, same thing as pain and 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 so on. So it's the same. I use use the same. It just use a lot more of it here, so to speak. And if inflicts gradual pain upon anyone caught in it, the dome of despair can be detected again using true sight or or evil. And this one, I'm probably good. To, if the if the caster wants, you can simply say everybody's supposed to see it. But in some ways, you might want to hide the effect a little bit. It's up to the caster in 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 that sense as a DM, you can adjudicate the priest wants everybody to see it or he wants to be more of a sinister and only certain people. He can kind of dull that. You, As a DM, I, I encourage you to to be kind of creative in how you describe the spell. It can be different from time to time, from caster to caster, and so on and so forth. I use face might appear and 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 laugh at them or, or things in this nature is encouraged, so to speak, because it's I use direct power that you, you do, so to speak. Affected creatures take one point of psychic damage per round the first minute. And then the, after one minute, it increased by one per minute, up to 10 per round after 10 minutes. And, and, this, and, and the thing is that it, if when you see this spell and you start taking, if you start legging and running as fast as you can out of the, the rain, there is a small chance you might make it out of the, the, the area of effect before you die, so to speak. So, so, so that, but then you need to, but the thing is that it's not going to kill you right away, so to speak. Most critters have like 10 hit points or so, so they can, they can survive for a few rounds. But if you don't start running, it takes more damage and then you start killing even more powerful critters, so to speak. And, and then victims who accept the damage meaning you don't want to run or panic or, or something like that. You can function as normal. You just take the damage. Vic and that means that no save, meaning that that's the accept the save. If you just take it and you don't try to 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 hide or, or, or do anything that gives you save, you just take the damage, you can act as normal. You just suffer, so to speak. Victims who, who become obsessed, meaning, oh, I need to save. I'm going to die from this if, if, if I'm not going to save. So that's up to each victim to demand a save, so to speak. And, and do it, so to speak. Then you, they, can, they can cast a, a, or, or use a, a, a wisdom save in order to, to become frightened. And and on if and and then to to move try and then the only thing they can do is run to whatever direction they think will get them to safety, because you realize the caster might be so far away they have no clue who's casting this because he might be half a mile away or three quarters of a mile away somewhere. So so this might be a very anonymous everywhere threat. So it's basically the critters that get affected and decide I want to flee from this and they get to save and if. If they fail to save, they just need to run in whatever direction they perceive being the, the best escape route, so to speak. And then there's a bunch, and meaning if you are below fifth level and stuff like that, you are going to die from this if you don't start running right away. That then, then, then or, or are immune to it. But then there comes there is a way of, of of avoiding this, even if you get caught in it, so to speak. So, so there, there was a, a bunch of, of stuff is to, to, one is to do, I use bidding and kill a creature. If you kill <laughs> a creature, it will give you immunity equal to number of minutes equal to the CR. And if it's a good creature, that means that you get double the damage. So, so all I use is troop caught in it need to do is kill someone on the good side and they're probably good. Then they can continue. So they probably learn that all they need to do is run towards the enemy fearlessly and start slaughtering and, and then survive, so to speak. So it's a way for I use to, I use to get two kill two stones in one two birds in with one stone both the to harm the enemy and scare them and get their own troops into action so to speak but the problem is that if the caster if if an Iusian priest gets greedy and just cast this to to to, to just whatever to, and there is no one 
that doesn't affect anyone or everyone runs away, Ayus gets so pissed because he needs to expend power. So he will use the power on the caster himself, so to speak. So 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 the 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 the, the priest needs to make sure that there are enemies for Ayus to 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 torture and torment and, and kill. If not, then he will torment whoever cast the spell. So so there is a, a, a safeguard plus the concentration built into it. Th those are the, the the thing. But the other thing that could save you is a, a radiant shield. That's a fifth level shield that a, a spell that paladins and good clerics and stuff can cast. They will reduce the damage by half because they give protection from it. A beacon of hope will provide advantage on saving throws and, and so you can stay. And it will also maximize the effect of healing because you can heal yourself while you're doing it. That's the other thing, so to speak. It doesn't stop healing from working in, in any way, so to speak. And a holy aura that some paladins and um, priests and stuff have will, will generate complete protection from Dome of Despair. So paladins and others do have good, good deities protecting them. They can basically operate within this um, without a problem whatsoever. The, the um, cleric spell Miracle will dispel a Dome of Despair. So there are ways against it, so to speak. So it's a it's a very powerful spell if cast in the right circumstances, because he can literally kill hundreds uh, if, if, if if so to speak. If thousands. Cast, uh, is, yeah, exactly. Because exactly it's it's a thing to dominate a battlefield, to scare the believing bejesus out of a city. And if they don't have any good priests and stuff to protect them and and, and holy yeah. temples to, to seek refuge in and stuff like that, then they're doomed. So this is one of the, the ultimate doomsday weapons of, of the Iusian force, so to speak. To to If they want to take a village or a town or facing an enemy, this is the kind of, of, of our thing that, that they will throw at the enemy and at their own troops in order yeah. to make sure that they do a, a good fight, so to speak. And and so so that's the 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 dome of of despair. Yeah, spell. Man, yeah. I, I think uh, personally, I think the effect's too big. But that's your that's your call. Oh yeah, but <laughs> I, want, I wanted it to to be the, the reason I wanted it to be big is is because uh, first of, it's because there should be almost impossible to run away from it. That's the that's oh. the thing. <laughs> and but but also it's a spell that is fairly if if you determined band of of adventures and you have some healing you can fairly easy you, you you can you can wither this one so to speak and and you can also if you have a, a, a priest with you and stuff like that you can cast a whole bunch of stuff right. in order to 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 so it's not that difficult to protect from if you have good protection if you're a band that have paladins and clerics and stuff you can you can fairly easy weather this one see but if if you are, are are a bunch of nobodies caught out in the open you're going to die from i this. i always yeah. relate it yeah. to this and mm -hmm. what would tim do anna yeah. Tim's going to stand at the furthest area effect away, a half mile away, because yeah. it's mm -hmm. a one hour, it's a half mile yeah. each, and mm -hmm. stand there, have his priest yeah. hidden, cast yeah. it, and just let everyone die. No, yeah, <laughs> but but the, the, you have to realize that the priests have to concentrate for the whole thing too. So so so, and this is something that will, is used in. This is like the yeah. wartime doomsday. doomsday I understand weapon. that, but if they're yeah. invisible, mm -hmm. he'll make him oh, invisible. Yeah. Or whatever he'll he'll do something, and then they'll be sitting mm -hmm. there, and they'll be hiding in a hovel, concentrating and killing everyone. Oh and yeah, it's but... fifty five points of damage after uh, round ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just... yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 in it's in, in, in one of the insane ones, and you have to to. Okay. I'm, I'm going maybe going to to we might you, you and of course anyone can do anything with it in that sense, or, or simply say uh, that I, it's I, way. I, I always powerful. have to think that way. So. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm not so so devious in that sense. Uh, Many, it's practical. You only right. cast it if you have some sort of visibility over it, so to speak, and it's also something that ties up the most important spell caster for a whole hour he can basically do nothing else useful for, right for with it. concentration so, I, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's so another so way if so, i yeah. put an arrow through him uh, at minute 36 the spell's ruined yeah no, no, oh, it, so yeah, from then on, so to speak, he works until then. So to speak. So, yeah, yeah so concentration is broken, and and yeah, that's it. So they need rules. to shield him from or or the caster from whatever. Yeah, it's a so different world yeah. than our one e two e world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that is something, and and it's it's also something that that 
I use will use sparingly because he needs to to sign up. It's his power that he's he's putting in there, so to speak. But and it's something that is fairly. And you can also dispel it, meaning the holy aura could give protection, so to speak. And holy aura against the paladin is like, and you can cast uh, similar right. types understand. of effects. Yeah, I'm just thinking so, on uh, the masses yeah. have no shot. Mm -hmm. You can go to oh, yeah, Shendel, mass, go to yeah, Shendel mass, and cast that, uh, mile, uh, cast that into the city. If you try to do it in, in Shendel, people. then you will be Shendel has enough paladins and 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 holy whatever too. So so if if an Iusian priest of that caliber comes close to Shendel, he will face because there will be. I haven't shown that, but the good guys have similar type of, of magic okay. that they can okay. weed out the evil ones too. So so it's only what not only one side who has powerful stuff. But it's the the type of magic that evil meaning I use need he conquered one third of the the Flannies, and this I imagine is the type of weapon he used okay. in order to 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 kind of facilitate it and and so so you you run unless you are prepped meaning if if you are shielanders and and you are trained and you are a bunch of fifth to tenth level for Indian knights and stuff like that this is not going to kill you it's not going to set you back you can heal up a little bit and you can go move on and and you can slug your way through but if you're a bunch of uh, poor farmers who are caught in the open you're not going to live through this and that's why i want the iusian armies to be terrifying but if you are trained, equipped, and ready to fight, and and then you can fight your way through this one. No, no, no biggie. A determined party. This is not even dangerous to them. But to 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 a thousand peasants who are taken out the and well, in, I use wrath. Yeah, it's not dangerous to them if they don't have to eat next season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I go through this one uh, fairly quickly because oh, yeah. we, we have, have exterminate. Uh, we're close yeah. to time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exterminate is is the the opposite. That's the last ditch defense for Iusian priest, and it's it's a it's a general necromancy. I take it from the 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 ne book of necromancer, but yeah. I tweaked it into to my version. So 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 it it's a, a necromancy. It's ninth level spell, one action range is three hundred feet, and and it's a little bit special, uh, and and target any numbers of creatures within range. And that's the important. It's verbal only, so it's it's doesn't require a lot of, of tricky things. It's a last ditch defense to, to kill off things around it, so to speak. Duration instantaneous and 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 saving throw constitution halves. And 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 then you send out a wave of, of necrotic smoky black energy that travels at a hundred feet per round out to three hundred feet. And it does thirty points of necrotic damage on basically everything it counters, unless you save, then it's half. And 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 again, it's not powerful enough heals to undead. kill the, the big ones, but and it heals undead. That's the other yeah, beauty of this cool. one, so to speak. Yeah. And and the 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 the, the other tricky thing with this is that it wouldn't be because most thing adventurers and others that will be close would save. But if you're within a hundred feet, it comes so quickly that you're saving through you save at a disadvantage, which means that then it becomes much more powerful close up. And between one hundred and two hundred feet, you save normally. At two hundred to three hundred feet, you save with an advantage okay, because you can cool. see the thing coming, so to speak. So it's a spell that is very effective close up to weed out lots of enemies. Plus the fact that if you're an Iusian priest or necromancer, if you have undead, you heal them by the same amount. So it's it's one of these to turn the battlefield to your advantage, so to speak, quickly. That that's that's what it is yeah. anyway. and it's arcane and divine so you can you can you can cast this as an arcane uh, necromancy spell if you want and strain is necrotic and and taint is evil the first one is a divine only the D dome of despair is divine only i use gives it no one else and and it's fiendish and and it's an evil of course and and so, so those are are are, are my my kind of spell that they, they're both are nasty and but in com two completely different ways so to speak so yeah one is is very and and you can kind of tweak and you can also say that the dome of despair not work inside buildings and stuff you can you can limit it that way it only works in the open so if you have something to flee into a hole or a building then you you protect yeah, it you can, it, yeah. You, you can tweak so, it. so you can always tweak things like that too so yeah very very cool Man, they are yep. deadly, Anna. Wow. Oh yeah, they're very deadly. That's the whole idea. Deadly for <laughs> deadly for weak creatures. I use don't like weaklings. He wants to weed them out and turn them into undeads. 
Yeah. Luke Gygax is on. Hey, Luke. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, we're having a little fun here with Ed talking spells uh, yeah. tonight. And, Great and to me, see you. And me on. ruining it with bad spells. No, <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said that. No, but... <laughs> that oh, yeah. spell is like, is oh, powerful. my God. Can you imagine yep. Althea and Halga actually having that spell oh, yeah. during the yeah. I, Oh, That's, my gosh. That, that, they, they conquered one third of the world. You don't do that lightly, so to speak. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what they have and they can they can cast maybe one a day or something like that of it so yep it's so uh we have two yep. more brand new spells from ed okay number five yes let's go for it ed okay that's flesh a- mask oh evocation level oh. two range self duration special area of effect special components verbal somatic material Casting time, six segments, saving throw, special. Explanation description. By means of this spell, the caster brings into being a flying, fleshy mask in the air in front of them. It flaps like a bird or a bat, flying vertically and or horizontally at a rate of 12 inches per move, half that if ascending, twice that if descending in a dive, and... I'm switching editions here just to make it clear. Maneuverability class B. Yeah. The flesh mask attacks the face of an opponent with a single violent slap, aiming to strike and stick. And it exudes acid when it does so, which may blind a target and or dissolve flesh. For the mask to hit its target, the caster must succeed on a ranged touch attack at plus two. Okay. If the, if the attack misses... The mask will flap about and try again on the following round. And if a second failure is the result, it will then harmlessly fade away. The mask slap deals one point of bludgeoning damage plus a base of 1d4 hit points of acid damage increased by one point per level of the caster. The target is allowed a saving throw against the spell. Success means the acid damage is reduced by 1d2 points and no blindness occurs. Failure means full damage, and the target is blinded instantly for 1d2 rounds. The round of the mask strike, or that round, and the following round. The target sees only grayness and suffers a a minus 4 penalty to their attack rolls, while its opponents gain a plus 4 bonus to their attack rolls. The material components of the spell are a live Sturge, which is transformed by the spell into the mask, It may have its wings clipped or amputated beforehand without affecting the success of the casting, and a small fingernail-sized or larger piece of human skin, fresh or preserved, may be from the caster. And of course, again, that human skin would have been edited out back in the day. Right, right. The one thing I did not put in this was any charisma effects, because I think in this case, particularly for a second-level spell, if that's going to happen, that should be adjudicated by the dungeon master at the table, not written into a spell effect so that it's a can't avoid right. part mm-hmm. of the spell. That's cool. Yep. What were your concept? Like, how did you come up with that? You're just like, wow. Uh, I just I just think of cool things that could happen. Yep. And as it happens, when I was a little kid, I once saw a bat flapping up and down, up and down, up and down, outside a chink in a wall to try and get itself correct for going through the hole. And um, much, much later, years later, um, I saw the same thing at the very end of the movie Labyrinths when they start yeah. singing, remind me of the babe. And the mm-hmm. owl is flip, flap, flip, flap, 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 and, th- and then it lights on the on the tree branch to look in sort of thing. That's cool. And, and, and but but no, uh, I was thinking of all sorts of things because remember, it was always story for me. It was things yeah. I was thinking of before there was a game with, you know, all due respect to Gary, because I have to tell you, I think we don't dwell enough on the fact because everybody goes, Vancy and magic system. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we don't think enough about the brilliancy in this original player's handbook where he wrote up all the spells and thought about gaps and and misuses of them and anticipated most of them and wrote them down and wrote things into the rules to stop them. And it's just brilliant. 
there's not very many spells in the original player's handbook that got major rewrite when it went to second edition. Yeah. Think about that. Most of them yeah. are really in, in, in great, you know, are still as is if you're playing that. Solid spells. Yeah, solid. Absolutely. Hey, darling. Yeah, Starling. Uh, just excellent, excellent concepts early on, you know, uh, that were the thought out process and the balance that worked, you know, and that was the great thing. Um, and mm-hmm. to this day it works and that's the and that's the thing with all these new spells uh working them in to working with them you know you always have to think about that so you know which is really neat len lakofka used to talk about spell balance a bit he did amy mm-hmm. he did you won a contest didn't you you won you won the bag contest to spell with the spell uh, i know uh a lot of mischievous players at his table to play test as well <laughs> yeah exactly luke that's so true um yes Still a love for aquatic spells. You know what, uh, Troy? We're all waiting, man. We're waiting for that that publication. Absolutely. So, uh, all right. So that is, I know we're already over 10 here, but Ed, let's give us number six. Okay, last spell. And, you know, once again, this is for all those patient gamers who said, I want to kill something. Come on, <laughs> give me a killing spell. Okay, but remember I'm doing nuts and bolts spells today? Yes. I'm doing small, low-level spells. So yeah. let's go back to your childhood, childhood. No, let's go back to um, <laughs> second level again. So, okay. fire modes, evocation, level two, range six inches, duration three rounds, area of effect special, components verbal somatic material, casting time three segments, saving throw none, explanation yes. description. With this spell, the caster brings into being a cube shaped cloud of spinning, ricocheting, caster's thumb-sized motes of magical flame. They whirl about wildly, but they never stray outside the cube. To the motes, the cube walls are solid. Motes rebound off them back into the cube interior. The cube is 15 feet long on each side, centered on a point of the caster's choosing, which must be within spell range and visible to the caster at the beginning of casting. Any creature takes 2d8 fire damage when it enters the cube for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, except the caster, who only do takes only two points of fire damage. If the fire motes caster is sixth level or higher, the fire damage suffered within their fire mote spell increases by one point per caster level for themselves or any other creature. The material component of the spell is a small lump of saltpeter, or a lump of ash from a magical fire, or any spell that's not a spell cast into it, or that's been in the area of effect of a spell. Ta-da! It's like a mm-hmm. super cool fire wall of fire that right, except it's got the moats bouncing around in the area, and then they're hitting stuff as it comes. I like that. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, but but the spellcaster is still taking some damage mm-hmm. every, every time someone new comes in. Correct or. Yes. So no, if, no, only, only if the caster happens to have cast it so that they are within the... I uh, got within side okay. the cube. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Within think, the cube. All right, so the, so the air effect can be anywhere. What's the, what's the distance on the spell range? Da, 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 uh, six inches. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, uh, so, uh, yeah, ordinarily you would not cast it so that you're within it. Okay. okay. But, but uh, you could in desperation if you're being attacked. Because <laughs> what's the duration on that one? Uh, uh, one round per level, or, or... Da, 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 three rounds? It's, it's only three rounds, Luke. So that's yeah. that's a limited yeah. area uh, effects. Spell. Yeah, yeah. Is it no and save I, or save for half? I'm sorry. Uh, on the two die eight, none. Ha ha ha! None. none. Does... Yeah, you might want you might want to tweak that. <laughs> nope. See, it's like I got uh, <laughs> no. something that kind of works more guaranteed too. So yeah. <laughs> well, but the good thing in five in <laughs> fifth edition, you can either have a to hit or you can have a save. Th- those are the two yeah. main options. You can have a spell attack or or you can have a or you can either use an attack roll or a save. Yeah, so. And it's a it's only a fifteen foot di radius or diameter. No, it's a cube. It's a cube, so it's only a seven and a half foot radius. Yeah. So uh, if you think about it, cube on each side, mm-hmm. so it's only 
uh, in combat on a miniatures table, it's it's not a large area effect. I mean, it's half the area effect of a, if it was circular, of a fireball, of, of a sphere. Mm-hmm. It's half of that area effect. That's a small area effect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's a cool, it's a cool. Corridor uh, killer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. War, it, it's a corridor killer. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. good, it, you know what also is good? It's when you have a double length wide door and you want to clear that area <laughs> before you go through the door and you put that mm-hmm. thing up and then you wait for the, you know, yeah, that's a good, uh, or you yeah. go in and you back out and you cast that as things are coming in on you. It's a cool, it's a cool use spell. And that's uh, that's awesome, Ed. And so all six of those, Ed's gonna will have compiled. and will email them to me, and then I will give them to. I will give them. I to, have. Yeah. I have emailed them to your Comcast. Um, oh. uh, if it if it hasn't popped up, yell at me, and I'll try again. I'll double check. Yeah. So um, we got two questions, Ed, that um, are off off a little bit, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, and why not? W- and why not? <laughs> so uh, one was on Arcane Age, and Big Mac was asking about the power of Arcane Age spells. Like, yes. Are they super powerful? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, one of the reasons I wasn't a fan of the actual rules as written, I thought, yeah, I know we wanted to go for the idea that things were more powerful in the old days, but um, I, I, I thought some of them needed to be playtested. And I can tell you flatly, they weren't. They were just written and sent to press because there was no time. I I didn't do any arcane stuff to, directly. Uh, that was a consult, but um, yeah, that was one of those things where, you know, you really should play test these. <laughs> right. Okay. There's uh, all, uh, play test exists for a reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, <reason. laughs> a- absolutely. Um, so uh, that's that's um, that was number one. Number two was. I don't know what the, uh, I apologize because I have no idea what this is. Karsus's avatar. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he what said about... something about uh, that breaking the game with that. Is that what? Uh, is that a? I don't know what. What was yep. the? Yes. Uh, was it just spellfire level or? Ah, uh, nothing to do with me. Karsus is oh. nothing to do with oh, okay. me. Oh, okay. Um, that was added to the game, and at the time, I thought, oh boy. Okay. You guys have to start writing limitations in there, but okay. it, there were none, so it was like, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, okay. um, yes, um, yes. Uh, in theory, this was a spell in which Karsus briefly became a god just by casting a spell. And to me, that's, nope, we don't go there. Okay. But I, I mean, I'm not the copyright holder. I'm not in charge of things. I'm a freelancer from up in Canada. And for story reasons, they thought that was a cool thing to do. I have always thought that that story should be um, prefaced with, this is the story as it has come down to us. Meaning the truth may be different in, in detail. But yeah, Karsus briefly cast a spell. And in, in the uh, lore as written, Mistress sacrificed herself to... Uh, preserve all magic ah, and, and he's okay. uh, he was caught uh, as a alive and dead at the same time and in, in a floating in a plane but the thing is he had to have this special spell that would make him a god and that is the Karsus avatar spell and i i read up the thing and said yeah somebody just you know it must have been deadline time bing 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 done okay okay um, yeah. <laughs> How often there have been instances where existing spells were altered by elements used? No, a hundred percent, Luke. I mean, that's how I make up my elementalists. If there's a hole, mm-hmm. like right, you know, I, the, my favorite one is the variations where you just spell like acid ball. I mean, you know, hey, that's a great <laughs> that's a great one off a of fireball or ice. You know, you know, you got you got some spells. Yeah, like, you could switch out the element of one spell to yeah. another. So yeah, so yeah. Definitely. yeah. Mm-hmm. You just gotta be mm-hmm. look and make sure the area effect still works yeah. on it. Um, and then uh, there's actually a wild mage spell called, uh, and this is from the Great Net Spell Book called Legolas Weird Wild Ball, where there are 20 different effects, and it's dust ball, fireball, mm-hmm. lightning ball, a vacuum ball, positive energy, and it's random. 
Yeah, so, in, in third edition, they had yeah. a black fire that was necrotic fire. That was, yeah. You had necrotic fireballs and stuff like that. And I've seen that for 5e too. So that's another yeah. one you can use if you want to. Definitely. Can, and there's yeah. a lot so of You can make options. cold fire too, or like cold spells and, and stuff that way too. Yeah. A, a good rule of thumb, if you're looking at the original player's handbook and the early spells, is if there's a limitation on a spell and it's a it's the same spell level as yours or one spell higher or one spell lower, take a good look at the limitations that have been written into that other spell and make sure your spell has some limitations on it. Mm -hmm. It will avoid some of the more egregious things that happen when you, you fall in love with the coolness of your spell and you just, you know, oh, I'm going to give it this. Nah, the hell with it. I'm going to give it this. No, don't, no, don't do that. Think of the world. Think of the children. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I did in my spells. I thought specifically. Yeah, you know, the, animating the children, Anna. <laughs> I use needs uh, troops. Yep, oh, reliable that's, troops. That's awesome. yep. I'm not going to go over these real quick, but I just want to show them to Ed. And here are the. Um, uh, and Luke, you'll get a, my buddy Alan. We have a Greyhawk Mage class. Uh, Ed plays the one for out of Luke in the game, as you know, because you've actually you've had uh, Eliade or play with you know exactly. So here's some nice little spells added from uh, you know as we're uh, increasing our Greyhawk Mage. Uh, you know he's going. Yeah. We're, we we go up to fifth in spells because once we ninth tenth level, you, you don't cast six level spells to eleventh. So I told him concentrate on the lower level spells. So we have more variety. There's Nystal, Tensor's new Inner Spear spells. These are added. These are all additions to the, the book, uh, Grauk Adventures, and all the other miscellaneous publications. He fixed Giant Strength, though. He hated the Giant Strength spell in there, and I agree it was a little underpowered, so he fixed that. And then we have, uh, here's the one, uh, Ed's playing the Otto Luke. Whoops. Otto Luke, Otto Luke. Here's the Otto Luke spells. Uh, you already used Incendiary Wave, that one adventure. You know, you yeah, crushed. That was you crushed yeah, so that's Otto Luke. You have that. Um, and then we have Aluk's Smoky Screen, Aluk's Rain of Boiling Oil. I think you used that one too. Um, yes. Aluk's yes, Smoky Double, Aluk's Improved Smoky Sphere, Aluk's Mystical Magic, uh, Mystical Mirror Spell. You know, so he's doing really well with the development of this Greyhawk Mage, uh, you know, class that we have. So uh, you know, I, I want to give him a kudos for all the great stuff he's adding to uh, to the game. Uh, for us, and uh, and I really appreciate you playing one because you know it's just we're having a, such a fun time with uh, with it, and uh, you know it, it's like humbling. <laughs> no, it's I'm delighted. Greyhawk Mage. <laughs> I, I'm delighted. It's it's my chance to play in Greyhawk. Yes, mm -hmm. and we because... will continue. And if you don't know, at Luke's on, we will have this um, two drink minimum at GaryCon. So, uh, with one exception, look, Eric Boyd will be the only one not there. But everyone else will be there, and we'll have Mr. Uh, Mr. Veluskis playing, and we'll also have one special guest that Luke's working on playing uh, as well. And we're gonna have some, we're have some fun with it. Uh, can't wait in person, you know. So that'll be really nice to have Ed and uh, um, Tony, Ed, uh, Eric Mangi, um, Anna, you know, just all together. Can't wait. So. Um, I know, uh, yes, Gary Khan's going to be fantastic this year. And I know we went over time. Sorry about that. Um, you know. I, I'm totally okay. okay. Take all the time you need. Uh, all right. Sounds good. We're going to run a little late then, if that's okay. We'll run a little. Uh, so, uh, so Ed, your, your thoughts on or, and suggestions to everyone out there, just in their, where to start and, and what to come up with if you're like trying to create some own spells. Give them some advice if you, if, uh, if you could. Okay. Uh, in the same way that a novelist uh, might create something because they have a story need, think to yourself, what do I need in my campaign? Because in theory, at least I hope, you're not just going to be creating spells for the heck of creating spells. And in theory, you're not going to be a contributing editor for Dragon Magazine because thanks to the current copyright holder, there is no Dragon Magazine mm -hmm. anymore. Grr. Um so you're not going to be doing it because um, Kim needs an article uh, in, in like no time at all, please. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So in theory, you're doing it because you want to add something to your campaign, your play. So think first of what you want to do with a spell. And think second, like everything else in the world 
and I wish more politicians in the real world would think of this. <laughs> what is the minimum amount of force or power or resources I can devote to what I want to do to achieve the effect? What's the minimum? Don't blow what you don't have and don't blow what you might need for tomorrow. Keep your powder dry, as the old saying went. You know, what's the minimum I can do? So always think of minimizing your spells. And for one thing, it may not be as sexy cool to, oh, you didn't create any ninth level spells for this. or, But it is so gratifying when your spell list for your character at the low levels when your character needs to stay alive, um, you can accomplish really cool things with first, second, third, and fourth level spells and stay alive and all sorts of cool fun can be had because it's at the lower levels that the game is more fun, particularly for beginners. That's their nostalgia point. So if you give them lots of cool spells that they can encounter and use down at that level, it they will be far more useful than later when they've high level and they're just trying to decide oh i need to uh, i need 52 blasting spells for my character which 52 will i pick this round? That's you know uh, you want it at the lower levels and you i mean you're trying to give your players a fun time i mean th yeah. this may sound weird but but i always think i am wasting some hours of my players lives time they will never have back in their rush toward the grave which they do not know the length of that that st stumbling journey but i am taking up precious lifetime that they have so i should make my time at my gaming table the most fun i can and you know we all vary some days we'll be tired we'll, we'll screw up and everything but <laughs> yeah. but you're trying to make it good so the magic should be cool it should be mysterious rather than the the one danger I thought we got to um, just when I started writing for for TSR when they had um, the the wondrous inventions product and we had Cruz's magnificent missile and so on um, that was that was a cute joke but it ran the risk of making magic seem mundane and yeah. everyday and that we were trying to duplicate FedEx and other things in real life with magic and in doing so we were chipping away at the sense of awe and wonder that magic is really cool and really special and that the people who practice magic the people who have that rare ability to master magic and hurl it no matter how much we may hate them if we're a, a knight or an adventurer who's about to get taste their battle spell or a king or a ruler as much as we hate the pesky wizards they are a, a gorgeous natural resource not to be trifled with because we may need them. We may need them to save our world the next time dragons come raiding. So we shouldn't off them. They are special. And, and, and to do that, you want magic to stay cool. And to do that, you want to be really, really careful in its design. Because you don't want somebody saying, I'm never using that in my campaign. It's gross. It's overpowered. It's you know whatever. You want it to be Oh, I can't wait to use that spell. That is so cool. That's the result you want. And to do that, you always have to think of, we play this way at our table, but remember any time you've ever been at a convention and you ran into somebody else's playing style, was there ever a time that you'd go, what do they do that for? That's crazy. Okay, you have to think of how other people may play at their gaming table and make sure you haven't written something that is plum ready and right to be abused mm -hmm. by somebody who's playing in a different playing style than you play it. And you, it, it's almost like having a sacred responsibility um, with a cool new weapon or a cool new car that can go faster than anybody else. Um, I have an obligation to society to limit this or be careful. Okay, nice. and, and spells are the same way. Um, if you again, if you if you put it back to trying to put yourself in the mind of somebody who lives in this setting, how would you feel if you don't have magic 
and that weird person next door does, and you've just given them a cool new spell to do nasty things to their neighbors. <laughs> no, no, you're 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 dead on. So magic, the spellcaster, gotta have whether it's a necromancer or just whatever it may be, just a straight mage has to have that allure to him, right? Yeah. Of some sort, you know, and just has to have something there that is like, uh, uh, I always hope that eventually one or two, you have like these spells that you talk about, wow, this is my go-to spell. And it isn't the fireball. No, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, there's like, Alan, my, my player Alan, he's really good with stuff. Like in a cleric, he always casts Blessed Watchfulness out. And it's a defensive spell that no one else casts, but it has serves a purpose. And, you know, it, it's one of those really neat spells. Like those go-to spells are cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I love. Like the, the and look, we already have memories on freaking many jaws. Your, your spell, because we've it's been used multiple times. We had two different ca spell casters casting that chomping away at stuff in that crossover event with the Slav Squad Squad and Euron. It was really neat, and that's just it creates it creates a great game new memory. The spell cast, yeah, and the variety, Ed, the variety of stuff. We have so many spells, and you're right beyond beyond that player's handbook first edition. Uh, and this is where I'm not bashing five E, but I love the one E two error because we have thousands. And thousands of spells out there that you just need to have the right book or the great net spell books that are on the internet. You can still find, and you have access to literally ten thousand spells. Yeah, you yeah. just got to go through them. You got to call through them because not all of them are good. <laughs> some of them, are, some of them will get you a thirty day ban on Twitch too. So, uh, all right, you know, so uh, you got to, you got to just know, uh, you got to, and you got to play test them and you have to, uh, you know, there's got to be a balance in it, but it's just awesome. So that's why I love Ed's stuff so much. That's why I used, I've used it for years. The books are, take good in, out there, take good, whatever it is. If it's Dragonlance material, take it, put it in your campaign, tweak it, you know, or if it's Dark Sun or if it's, you know, in your Grail campaign, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we have, you know, exactly. Yeah, do the, and uh, hopefully that happens in reverse too. People take great, well, they have. I mean, look at all the great, look at all the tensor and Mordekane spells that are in, you know, that are now in the, the canon of the game, right? So I know I babbled a little bit there. What are your thoughts, Anna? I think it's good. And I think one of the, the, the really key points that I think Ed was, I think that most people don't realize is that. The spells need to fit your campaign and your play style. That's very, very, very different. My campaign, you saw that a lot of the ranges are long. My adventures are primarily outdoors. So so that, that's one reason. And and also the spell effects are li range are limited by vision. That's why wizards build towers and stuff. So so a mile range will not do good underground because you will not see through the next room, so to speak. So 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 therefore it's it's so some spells are limited by how you play and your play style too. So so a lot of these things come into to to play a lot, and you can detect things when you cast my campaign when you. Uh, Wizards and clerics and others, they can detect a caster. So meaning, so when you cast a spell, you become a target as well. So it's risky to cast spells and use magic, but it's also very rewarding, so to speak. So so it depends on how, how and, and also in your campaign setting, how is magic? Is magic a, a rare thing that a few have, so to speak? Or is it something that is everywhere and, and, and most creators in the world can cast a little bit and, and doodle around with their magic and, and, and almost every other character. Like in, in a lot of 5e games, almost every other character, PC, becomes a, a caster of one sort or another because most classes and stuff have magical abilities. Or is it only the rare priests and, and the powerful rare wizards and, and the few sorcerers who, who can cast spells and hardly anyone else can? And and so so it's it's very much up to the nature of the setting and the rules of your your system and the the um, the, the 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 play style, which means that, like me, I make spells for my own campaign, so I can totally get it. If Tim gets a hold of of my dome of despair, <laughs> we all have to run for the hills, so to speak. So, exactly. Well, yeah. 
I yeah. have. I, that's and why you put that in another campaign that will be <laughs> that with, with other general rules and stuff, oh. then it will not work, so to speak. But in my campaign, that means that if you have a determined party and you cast it, they will say, oh, he's over there. Let's go for him, so to speak. Yeah. And that means that you can be targeted. So there's a whole bunch of – so one single spell doesn't tell the whole story, but it's, it's one component, so to speak. And that's why I also think that magic should not – not only, of course, you have to balance the spells, but you also have to make them work within Thanks, your setting and within your game system and your playstyle. So, mm -hmm. so magic needs to be magical, but it also needs to be. And you can, as a DM, you need to understand the the limits and and have an idea or a setup. But you don't need to tell the players that. That's something they need to figure out through gaming, so to speak. I have a lot of magic and natural law, so to speak, in my campaign, but I don't tell the players. They need to figure that out. Now I did made an exception by by spilling the beans here, and I'm going to post the link in in chat here to to so you have the article. And I I probably misquoted a few of the spells, but you can look in there, so to speak, and 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 get these the spells that we've been talking about and, and copy them in. But I think it's important. And meaning I make my spells for my campaign. If you make spells for a product that, that is going to be published or used by everyone, you need to be way more careful with, with stuff than I am with my spells that I use in my own campaign with my own tweaked house rules, so to speak. So that's another consideration. So, so but it's, I think it's one of the, the really cool features that makes D and D and fantasy role playing it's one of the essential things is magic and spells is kind of the essential embodiment embodiment of, of magic. So it's one of the key, key cornerstones of the game. Yeah. And I, there's one other thing I'd like to say on this topic, please. My father, um, now no longer with us, never, ever played D and D, but he used to read my, um, early fantasy fiction. As, as, a, as I was a little kid. And he said, son, I think it's brilliant that you've explained how this magic works. And he said, however, you have a responsibility. And I thought, uh-oh, what does this mean? No nude woman? You know, that's what I was thought we were going. But he said, no, no, no. The key thing about magic is its mystery. And by explaining how it works... You're stripping away our sense mm -hmm. of wonder. Yep. Your responsibility is to put it back. That's a good, really good advice. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, just uh, anything, anything you do out there that uh, others are going to utilize, and uh, you know, you want there, you, that's so true on the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah, you, know, you got to feel it. You got to feel that, you know, uh, and we have this Grail community here and just, you know, we try and do things that uh, keep it rolling, you know, keep it rolling yeah. over the years. So, yep. I'm, I'm glad Glass Jaws agree with me that evil spells should be a bit more punchy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Thank, thank you, Glass Jaws. I, I agree with you. They should be a bit more punchy. Yeah. All I said was, I know what Tim would do with that spell. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that hit, too. That's why horrific. I said, yeah, don't give him my spells because then we need to run, run for the hills. So, yeah, 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 yep. run, run out. Uh, so, what yep. a So, I want to say something. Happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas. Uh, happy Boxing Day. I hope we have a good, you know, we're on Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, Sunday night. I think we're still going to be on Sunday night, New Year's Eve night, New Year's Day night. But thank you. I mean, uh, 120 plus people on on a monday yep, night fantastic. thank you so very yep. much for the support here it really means a lot to uh, us um uh, really really thank you uh, we're going to try and keep things rolling here as we uh finish up 2022 um so um final thoughts ed on what a great discussion tonight six brand new spells i can't check my you send it to the lord gazamba email is that the one you sent it to because i can't uh, Yes, I can't check uh, that one. That's on my. I don't even have that on this uh, machine. Uh, I, I'll check it downstairs. I'm, I'm sure it, it went in. So thank okay. you. Yeah, shoot me an email or shoot me a, a, a PM or whatever they are in Twitter, um, or on Discord if you don't get it, and we'll talk about some other way that I can shunt. Yeah, you an email. no problem. It should be yeah. no problem at all. 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm defeated by technology. Yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an old. Fart. Email's good. I love email. I'm an old. I'm old. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I'm an old guy too, man. <laughs> so, uh, what were your final final thoughts in this discussion tonight? Uh, this is really cool, and uh, magic can be really cool in your games. And for those of you at home, particularly if you're a novice dungeon master and you want to do something for your campaign, and you're really unsure of um, designing magic, and you think you're going to get it wrong, just take an existing spell and give it a cool new name in the Vancean style, the, the style we see in Greyhawk, where a spell that could be called window washing gets called Nistel's window washer, or, you know, Otaluk's spell of the, you know, um, liquidify on the window pane or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, give it a cool name and jazz it up opponent and monkey with the casting time by one segment by changing the material component and your players might take quite some time to figure out that you've just rejiggered an existing spell yep. and it really doesn't matter if they do figure that out because what you want is that moment of coolness at the gaming table where they have to stop metagaming and mm -hmm. remembering what they memorized from the rule books and they're back in the moment of role playing trying to decide what their character would do and magic is cool again because it's unknown that's all you have to do do that it's a great point so much i want to make a uh, ed if you, you remember your you have a monster in an early dragon that, that the one that looks like a beholder that rolls on the ground. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> guess what? We have a figure for it. Oh, uh, right. Bill's painting it. So just mm -hmm. note that we're taking that and we're going to, you know, we're going to use some of these really obscure things. And Bill's like, this is the perfect mini for this. So yeah, yeah. it'd be a nice surprise. Excellent. And guess who I'm going to use it on? Hey, me. Of course. <laughs> Of course. You're, Thank we're, you. We'll, we'll see. But yeah, but that's the great thing. You're dead on right. Challenge your players, you know, and, and that's what I, that's what I love about. I, I what I love about you know the the game itself, and it doesn't matter what edition it is, you can do it. You can absolutely yeah. challenge your players and make some changes. Um, you know, and that's part of the fun of, and, and you'll know you're doing the right thing if your players come back. Mm -hmm. And want to come back for more, and that's how you'll know. So yeah, yeah, you're not trying to kill them off or punish them. No, you're trying change. to give them a memorable thing, so they will build memories at the table. Going, remember that time we did this? That was cool. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it's almost like talking at the you're at a bar talking about your experiences in the game. You know, you know. So it it is really really a fun thing. Ed, what do you want to shout out, man? What's going on? Oh boy. Um. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I have, I have two days to write a um, short story for a, a gaming anthology before the end of the year, because that's when they want it. Um, I have to write some encounters for Amazing Encounters. Um, and I've, I just wrote a forward for it. And now I have to put my nose to the grindstone and get at least one Athcliath book ready so Andrew can sell it and show it to the public and share it with gamers at GaryCon, which means we have to get our um, behinds in gear because the layout is taking longer than it should because we are um, obsessed with quality. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, because I you know, that GaryCon date is coming up quick, yeah. really quick. You know, it's just amazing how, how – uh, you know, how fast things are approached. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's not that far away. And then, before that, we have the fundraiser too. We have the Legends fundraiser coming up too. So we got to talk about that a little bit too. It's just so much. So, yeah, absolutely. But uh, anything else you're working on there, Ed, you want to discuss? Or is that a... Uh, the rest of the stuff is NDA, uh, unfortunately. Okay. That that's dreaded fine. NDA, yeah. the Hollywood stuff. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Um. I can tease about something. Tommy Gofton up in Can in Ontario, in Canada, uh, in Guelph, I, I will be uh, filming something that I can't talk about yet oh. in costume um, at the end awesome. of January uh, wow. with some, some st other streamers that you will recognize when you see us. 
cool. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And because I don't have to cross any borders for this, I might bring the Elminster cuts. Oh. Did I say that out loud? Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you, oh. you mentioned Elminster and 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And, we waiting eagerly, eagerly to see and hear what this is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I will yeah. verify the exact date that the fundraiser is uh, for 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 the legends, and you get to get tortured by the adventure puppets, just like Eric Marna too, if you want to. So uh, you know, we're going to try and raise a ton of money for St. Jude. It's in February, so we got tortured that. by the adventure puppets. Puppets it's that that sounds so kinky. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes. Eric Mona has been begging me for two years to run that stupid adventure, and mm -hmm. so I'm going yep. to be uh, I'm going to be doing it for the fundraiser. Yep, yep. I love it. <laughs> so, um, Ed, thanks. What a great discussion tonight. Thank you so yep. very much. Thank awesome. you. This was awesome. Uh, you know, hopefully everyone is enjoying their holiday, and you know, we're going to kick it off uh, post Christmas and Boxing Day with a really nice discussion here. Anna, what's going on? Uh, at the Atlas, and it's very, very close. A couple of more awesome. days, it will be out before Christmas, uh, before New Year's. And so I've done, I wrapped up the index. It's like 4,600 labels or something like that. I corrected a whole bunch of stuff that I've encountered in the meantime. So it's basically the front page, the legend, and then wrapping it up. So it's it's coming in a couple of days. And and then I will dig into the heraldry compendium. It's That is a bit underway, so that is coming out. And I'm going to have... a uh, a, a, a Zoom conversation very soon with a guy out in Victorville that runs a print shop. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything more. We'll see. Nice. Yeah. So so we'll see. Yeah. It's a noble dwarf and and Mark Reed yeah. and me going to have a a, a, a conversation again. We've been talking about this for years. So so we're going to have some collaboration and stuff. So hopefully we can have some fun coming out of that for next year. And 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 so so yeah. So it's it's coming out. So once I've done the the. Um, the Atlas is out the door in a couple of days, and then I will put out the the uh, the heraldry compendium. The first one, the classics, will be the very first bit of the heraldry stuff, and and there will be more volumes coming next year. And then I will have I will dig into the, um, the Altamira, of course, and then I will also work on the Flan era historic uh, Flannies map. That will be it's halfway done. So 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 that one will take a couple of weeks to fix in January. So so. so so then I have a, a bunch of others. I'm starting to lay out the the ideas for my uh, City of Greyhawk project. So I'm going to present this spring. I'm going to present to my top tier patrons my thinking and what I want to include in a City of Greyhawk project because it's time to start ramping that up on the research, the concept uh, stage and so on because I want to do more than just a map of the city. So it's a project that I think will take three, four years to do, but it's time to start concepting it and stuff because I want help with and and ch checks and balances so to speak on on so many because there's so many of you that are more into the city than i have ever been so 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 i'm going to start uh, putting up the ideas and 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 the concept for what i want to do uh, with it both from a technical perspective but also from a more kind of artistic and and lore kind of concept too so so there are some some ideas i have uh, to what um, a cartography project of the city of greyhawk should be so to speak so that's coming too in a few weeks i will have the first kind of idea on that and then start doing the groundwork for the gis is starting to ramp up to and 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 of course my campaign will start again so there will be some some more rule spells and a whole bunch of campaign map come coming up nice. as soon as the yeah so the, this spring will be a, a, a kind of a, a flood of all the campaign maps that i'm going to, to that i now can properly render and and send out and stuff that the the players have experienced so that is coming too and the mapping live streams we had one last friday it was kind of so and so, so I will tr see if I can tweak the settings a little bit, but and and then keep, but at least keep that tradition alive, so to speak, by working on Friday nights. So yeah, that's about it. So yep, very cool. All right, so this is what's going on. It's kind of a normal week on streaming for the most mm -hmm. part. Um, let me see. Thank you, George. Right Thank you, George. There. Yep, there is a summary coming. So yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And if outlook proper outlook coming at New Year's. Yep. Wednesday night, 
I, I don't. I'm just gonna have to run this one. And I'm gonna sit back and just absorb. I have a absorb. bunch of ideas. This okay. is part of my my the the we, we we've had the Greyhawk academics. We talked about politics, economics, yep. and and stuff like that. This will be one in that series. So we talk about trade this time, and I think trade is more interesting than most of you believe. Remember when we talked economics and politics? Everyone was like, "Oh, this is going to be the most boring." They were actually really fun. A lot of people watched them and liked them. I think this one can be in that range so so there's some some coming on this one so yeah uh yeah because um it's going to be a theoretical one but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get we'll yep. get some we'll get some good stuff in here uh on yep. trade routes uh goes off of uh the ones we've had um we've had different ones on uh you know economics so it was just mm -hmm. but mike uh mike has a family thing so he's kind of yeah bailed he, out he so yeah, yeah he suggested this but i i want to run with it yeah. and we can do a follow-up later on, on absolutely on stuff too so yep mm -hmm. thursday night almost all my guys are out except walt so i have a little special game uh i um it's uh, it's gonna be in narwhal it's gonna be the one group that was uh um running uh, in Blue Bay and coming back a couple of them. So Darling and Bones are going to be in on this. I may ask one or two others. I'm not sure yet. Called Finders Keepers. So we'll see what that's all about uh, out, out of Narwhal. I got a really cool idea for that. So I'll have the terrain up for that. Picks will go up for that either tomorrow night or Wednesday for the Thursday game. And then Sunday night, New Year's Eve is the um, – we'll finally get to the year in review, you know, 2022, uh, Gavin. So we'll have that. Yep. Talk about that. Chuck says he's supposed to come on. We'll see. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah yep. absolutely. And that'll be another great discussion. That'll be the first of the year. I'll have a 43 on my logo instead of a 42. So there you go. Changing that up. Um, yep. all right, let's do the giveaways real quick. Let me switch screens. Thanks, everyone, for hopping on Murlocs. Oh, Sparky. No, I, 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 I'm not going to torture them with Murlocs. No, nah, no. Nah, I, I got an idea on this one. It's going to be It's going to be a fun one uh, coming up. Uh, Little little twist, uh, Ed. I'm like, but what what button do I hit now? I'm like, oh my gosh, um, this one here. We're gonna, right closing this out. Thank you for that follow. You get your choice. You either want the Oculus Green Titan dice or the the Monsters and Treasures of Air book oh. controller games Castle yeah. and Crusade system. So. First winner, Gatano, Grendel Wolf Slayer. Congrats, dude. You're congratulating yourself? That is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That was awesome, Gatano. He didn't even realize it. I so, think he punched that in before yeah, he, yeah. he could hear You want the Aculus Titans. Awesome. Next that is winner. so cool. Yes, yeah, so I was yep. like, that is funny. <laughs> Josh Pops out of the Oh my god. Oh wow. We only oh have insiders gosh. today. So damn. That is Yay, awesome. Have you, how random have you been today? Well, it's just <laughs> a so uh there you are. No. Yeah. Uh, do you have it's this awesome. already? I don't think you have this. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, give it to your yes, yes, absolutely give it to your son. So, please sit tight. We're we're going to raid into someone a kind of a big name. Uh if you know who uh, Jennifer Kretschmer is. Dream with yeah. Jen. We're gonna rate. We're, yeah. we're gonna rate into her. Now oh. you have to be a follower in order to like chat in there. Okay, just note that's how she has it set. But she's on now. It's a Monday night. I've never rated into her before. Let's try it. Right. Let's go for it. So, thanks everyone. Hope you all have a great night. Ed, this was awesome. Um, thank thank you. you for short notice too. I was like, oh, thank you. Uh, it was like a yes. week ago. No I was like, hey, Ed, you're free. So uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you about the. I'll talk about the fundraiser and any other Gary Con things we need to work out. But the fundraiser sure. is. The game would be February 18th would be the game. Saturday night, February 18th. Okay. okay. You want to check a look on that schedule with Eric Mona and yourself. Um, okay. That'd be cool. So, Anna, see you on Wednesday. Everyone yep. have a good one. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in the two days. Thanks all for uh, hanging out here on a, on a Monday night. Really appreciate the support. And uh, see you soon. Um, and keep keep your – hope you have a nice holiday. Uh, keep it going. All right? Yeah. And uh, we'll have some fun. And have a good night. Wrong button. Did I do any wrong buttons tonight? Thank you for that follow. Nope. None. None. No, no wrong, wrong buttons. buttons. Yep. Oh, well, we'll think, have to fix that. Any, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think anyone even punched in a wrong button in chat. If wow. I remember correctly. So, yep. All right. First show in forever. Oh, there you go. See, there you go. The Tim, the Nasrat, he, he saved you. So, there's wrong buttons. <laughs>
I love it. <laughs> Let's get over 100 in this raid. That would be awesome. Yeah! 100! 102. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you. See you soon. Wow. That's awesome. That's really cool. Two. Wow, that's a good rate. Yep. Yeah, Jen's nice people. Yeah. Can't hear it though. Single. I can't, I can't, I'm not a follower for 10 minutes, so I can't rate it. It's a 10 minute block on it. Oh, oh okay. That's there you go.